Mississippi game and then seeing people like Syracuse and Rutgers standing alongside down the road a little bit, there might be a tendency to look beyond them. It sure is, and they've had a week off to prepare for this game, and I'm sure Mike Godfrey has preached that to him, and he's preaching what happened against BC earlier in this year and also Temple. They can't afford to take anybody too lightly, but it's hard to do, especially when they're looking ahead next week to a real showdown with the team that looks like it's number one in the East right now, Syracuse. Here comes Pittsburgh onto the field. Their record four and two. They've beaten Brigham Young, NC State, West Virginia, and Notre Dame. They lost to Temple and Boston College. The Notre Dame game, of course, very pivotal. And there you see Mike Godfrey, what a job he's done in two years at Pitt. Not only a job of coaching, but a job of recruiting. He's brought some outstanding freshmen. And, of course, just two more wins, and I'll have an opportunity to actually have a winning season since the first time since 1983. So that's what faces the Pitt Panthers today. They've had a week off. What happens when you have a week off? Is it good? Well, as we watch Navy come on the field here, it can be. Coaches have mixed emotions about that. But preparing for the wishbone, I'm sure Mike Godfrey and his staff welcome the week off, gave him the chance to get acclimated to a totally different offensive set. The wishbone, and there is Coach Elliott Uzelak in his first year here as head coach. And, of course, he comes from uh, Michigan where he coached the wishbone offense. And you look at the wishbone offense, that started to work for them recently. It sure did, but it started to work when they changed their quarterback situation and went to Alton Grizzly. He's the young Cleve who's come into this, onto the scene here and done the job for him. Two quarterbacks have done well in their last outing. Sal Janella, they were calling for his head in Pittsburgh, but he proved himself against Notre Dame. And Mike Gottfried stood strong with Janella. Before the Notre Dame game, everybody wanted to change. He stuck with him, and he had enough of a game that made it possible for him to be the number one quarterback, there's no question about it. We co asked Coach Elliot Uzelak what Navy will have to do to stop Pittsburgh this afternoon. I think we have to do three things. Number one, we have to win the kicking game. We have to be very good in all phases there because they do an excellent job. Number two, we have to stop their running game. And number three, we have to block their uh, defensive tackles in order for us to uh, move the ball with the wishbone offense. Can Navy do it? We'll find out as we're set for kickoff in just a moment. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this word from your local station. Welcome back to Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. Pittsburgh and Navy set to go at it this afternoon in the battle of two great American independents. And Navy has won the opening toss. They have elected to receive in this 33rd meeting. Pitt leading the series 17, 12, and 3. Last year, Pitt won big at Pitt Stadium 56-14. But just two years ago, Navy won 21 to 7. The series dates back to 1912. Our officials this afternoon, Bill McDonald is a referee. He'll be talking to us mostly this afternoon. James Owens is his umpire. Verl Sell is the linesman. Joe Primeyer is the line judge. Jim Klingensmith is the side judge. The field judge is John Daniels. And Gary Dancerwitz is the back judge. The crew working our game today. Jeff Van Horn will kick off the Spokane Washington sophomore who struggled a bit in point after. Actually, not in point afters, but in field goals this year at 6 for 14. He'll be kicking off and receiving will be Clay Stackhouse for Navy. Stackhouse and Donald Hughes will be receiving as well. Also, we look into the lineup and we see a surprise back there. Freshman or plebe Jason Pace at the top of your screen. Stackhouse at the bottom of your screen. Van Horn set to kick their way. As we look at this series, in the last five years, since they've been meeting consecutively, Pitt has won two games, lost one, and they tied one three years ago here at Navy. And we're set to go on a beautiful late autumn afternoon. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. Pitt coming in at four and two, Navy one and five, and there's your kick. Back at it. It's going to be Pace at the 10. Pace up over the 20 to the 25, out to the 30-yard line, and that's where Navy will start first and 10. Lewis Riddick on the specialty team with the tackle. Let's take a look at the uh, wide receivers and the offensive backs for Navy. The key has to be 16, the plebe quarterback, Alton Grizzard. He came alive last week against Penn. He's a great rusher from the quarterback position of the wishbone. We'll see how he can operate today. And Army changing wide receivers as well. That offensive line is strong right in the middle with Brennan, Felt, and Hoffaker. First and 10 now, out of the wishbone. Navy operating from their own 30-yard line. Hit the six-man front, and Grizzard calls his own number and gets very little yardage up over about the 31-yard line. A gain of about one. It's a triple option. The wishbone is 
and they'll try to feature a lot, try to feature the quarterback and the fullback. Let's take a look at the defensive line now for Pitt. Two outstanding defensive players, Bert Grossman, one of the best defensive ends in the country, and of course, the freshman who's outstanding, Mark Spinner. And there's a change in the defensive end spot, too. Jerry Osowski is at the middle linebacker, along with Zeke Gadsden, who's one of the best in his position at outside. We'll talk a lot about him today. Second and nine for Navy. There's a handoff. It goes to Curtis Brown, the fullback, and he breaks tackles up to about the 35-yard line. Bob, want to ask you, interesting situation for Navy. They won the toss, but they decided to take the ball. Because they really want to control the football if they can. If they can get some first downs, get fairly good field position, use their punting game, they really don't want to give the football to the pit offense. As we look at that secondary with tremendous players and Gary Richard and Troy Washington at free safety. Look at the, the wishbone offense now. Full house backfield, third and five. Rizzard keeps it himself thrown for a loss by Carnell Smith back at the 32-yard line. A Car loss of three. Carnell Smith, only a sophomore at 6'3", 240, but very active, has played a lot this year for Grossman as well as for John Joe Carter. Here he is as we watch him. He just holds his position and makes the play as the quarterback here, Grizzard, elects to turn up field. Carnell Smith in the force of punt and trying to field position right away early in this ballgame. Andy Buick from Manassas, Virginia, the senior to kick and to receive it's Terrell Austin. Here's the snap, Buick averaging 34 a kick. That's some good hang time, and Austin calls for a fair catch at the 33-yard line, and that's where Pittsburgh will start first and 10. Let's take a look at Pittsburgh's offense after a 34-yard punt. No score in the first two minutes of football, and Pittsburgh getting set to take the football. So Pittsburgh comes out. No score on this one. First quarter at Navy Marine Corps Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. Stay right with us. Beautiful view on a mid-autumn day near Annapolis. Let's take a look at that uh, backfield. Sal Janema leads them out. Number 34 is the key. They've given him the football more than ever before. 30 times. And First time this afternoon, he finds lots of room off right tackle all the way over the 40-yard line, gets to about the 42. Craig Hayward on the carry, and a big tackle made by Mark Pimple. Let's take a look at that offensive line, a change at center. A change at center as we see Chip Bukowskis in the game, a senior from Allison Park, Pennsylvania, starting in place of Ed Miller, who's had a knee injury. They're very deep at that center spot, a nine-yard gain for Craig Hayward, brings up second down and one. Of course, uh, Sal Janella. He's been besieged in Pittsburgh prior to the Notre Dame game. Silenced his critics there. And had a week off to him. Well, prepare for this game. Here's the handoff to Riddick, his fullback. And Riddick gets the first down up over the 45-yard line to about the 46-yard line of Navy, or rather of uh, Pittsburgh. Greg Rapper in on the stop. Let's take a look at that defensive line out for me. They've got some substitutes, lots of injuries in that defense, and we see uh, at nose guard, uh, Chris Graham, a plebe starting. Two Pimple. great outside linebackers. Too. Exactly, and uh, again, another substitution at free safety, Bart LaRock in the game, starting here. Today. First and 10 for Pim at the 46. Then a little throw for the first time today. Big pressure on, dumps it to the flats to Frittick. Riddick gets some yardage into Navy territory at the 47. Mike Musser is the man who brought him down. Big That's a gain on the play of about six. The big question coming into this game, would they run the football? Here, this is a beautifully executed screen as Janela sits in here. Watch the rush come on him, and he just dumps the ball off into the flat, waits for the, the blockers to form in front of his receiver. Good job by Riddick. Riddick, as we know, was a free safety, and they moved him the fullback because of his athletic ability. He's averaging over five yards rushing per carry. Second down at about three now. Pitt in Navy territory. Hayward. Hayward straight ahead to the 45-yard line. Not enough for the first down. In on the tackle, Mike Jimenez from Miami Beach, Florida. You look at Craig Hayward. At a spelt 300 or 268 pounds. 268 he gained. He went up over 270 a week ago, but he's bringing himself down. He's aiming for 260 by the time he gets to Syracuse. But can you imagine the luxury of having a back that big that can run that well? He really is one of the premier runners in the country and starting to get some attention for the Heisman Trophy. Third and short for Pitt. Comes Hayward. He jumps over the pile at right guard and gets it down to about the 42-yard line. Up by the middle of the Navy defense, and Darren Fullwood comes up to make the stop. 
They bring the tight end back in motion. They just run him back inside, and he goes up over Mark Stepnoski, the right guard and an All-American candidate from Erie, Pennsylvania. And there's the stats on Craig Hayward. Six 100-yard or more games at 87, 130 yards a game. He'll carry it a lot, and he's fourth in average yard. Out of Passaic, New Jersey. Imagine, 268 pounds coming at you at 4.5 speed. Just get out of the way. First and 10 of the 42 of Navy. Hayward again. Almost has the ball stripped clean. Gets down to about the 38-yard line. And Ray Worthington out of Pearson, Florida, makes this stop. Good job by Worthington. The outside linebacker to that side, the third leading tackler, number 81. He came inside and made the tackle low. And when you look up, you think he made a great play, and he did, but he got three yards on the run just falling forward. And Craig Hayward, what happened was when Pitt went into the Notre Dame game after some surprise losses to both BC and Temple, they've just decided to give the ball to Hayward, and that's what's turned around their offense, and they've taken a lot of pressure off of that man right there, Sal Gianella. And Hayward is out of the game, and Adam Walker is in at tailback on second and second. Walker gets the call. Walker straight ahead and takes it down to the 36-yard line. In on the stop is going to be Mike Musser out of Vermilion, South Dakota. Had an opportunity to talk with Mike yesterday. Let's look at the play again. Musser is a... Uh... 6'3", about 250 pounds, and he's got experience. He's played a lot of football here, played in different positions along the line, makes a nice hit on the tailback there, and forces a third down and four for Janela here in this good field position for the pit offense. Walker's a nice compliment to Craig Hayward, as you saw. There's Janela to throw. Lots the man along the flat. It is completing. It looks like Osborne or Williams. It is going to be Williams. Reggie Williams at the 26-yard line. Larry Dickinson brings him down. Good job. Just a straight drop back action. He waits for Williams on the left side of the screen. The sophomore from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. 19 receptions coming into this ballgame. Makes the catch on the sideline. Gets the first down. Keeps the drive alive. Evidence is how little they're using their wide receivers this year as opposed to last year. It took him six games to 19 catches this year. Last year he had that in two games before he went out with an untimely injury. In motion. Here comes the pitch. And it's Hayward. Surprise to the 25-yard line. Curtis Irby making the stop out of Richmond, Virginia. He's the strong safety, and he came right up on the line of scrimmage. And again, if you're going to deal with Craig Hayward, you got to get down low. This is a little pitch. He looks to cut it back inside as he does. Here comes Ir Irby from the strong safety position. There's the hit, keeping it to a decent game. <laughs> when you're against him and you can keep it under three yards, you're doing well, and Navy did a good job on that series. Pip looking at second and eight. They're driving at the Navy 24 as you look at Elliot Uzelak. Janela to throw. Janela looking over the middle. It is complete. And it's going to be to Osborne at the 16-yard line. Very close to a first down. They, they ran a flood pattern here. As you, as you see Janela drop back, Riddick came out of the backfield, swung outside, brought the linebacker wide, and the, the wide receiver here, Osborne, curled back. The linebacker vacated the area as the back went wide, and he came back to the football, and it's third down and very short. Mike Godfrey looks over the play calling sheet. If you look at Janela's passing thus far this season, 68 for 125, 941 yards, eight TDs, four of them against DC, third and inches. He did not get the first down. That's shock in motion, and Hayward has it over the 15, down to about the 14. Larry Dickinson comes up from the defensive safety spot to make the stop. Elliot Uzelak does not want his defense to be on the field very long today. He knows he's outmatched and mismatched with the size of uh, the pit offensive line, particularly, and their running backs. But this is the kind of drive that Mike Godfrey wants. He wants to hold the football. He wants to get scores. And he wants to utilize the running of the big back, Craig Hayward. And that's exactly what they're doing, mixing it up with the short, controlled passing game on this first drive. And Uzelak uses defense. All 11 newcomers to starting roles. First and 10 at the 15 yard line. Janela to Hayward. Hayward gets hit once, but then again surges ahead in the grasp of David Lowe down to the 10 yard line. 
Running off the left side behind his left tackle, Tom Ricketts. And watch the balance here and the strength as he gets hit. When you hit him on the thighs, he just bounces off you and falls forward. Great size and strength. We'll say that all day. He's an outstanding football player. Nice block by Prentice Wright, who alternates with Lewis Riddick at the fullback spot. And as you said earlier, Bob, Riddick is quite a star. They want him to be a defensive back. He'll go back there next year. But Nate Hayward is, is hurt. So he's taking over the spot. Second down and about five. This is Riddick. Riddick inside the five to about the four-yard line. Tackled by Larry Dickinson. He's had a bundle of them right now in the early going. This time they came up in a pro set. They got Hayward. Craig Hayward is the blocker here on the right side. And they just give it to, to number five, Lewis Riddick. He's 6'3", about 205 pounds. He's got great speed. And he is a fine athlete. He is one of the most highly recruited high school football players in the country. Matter of fact, Lou Holtz said coming into this game, we wanted him very badly at Notre Dame. Pitt has a whole host of fine young recruits on this team that Mike Gottfried has put together in two short years. Mike Gottfried's had two excellent recruiting years. First and goal from the four. Hayward pulls ahead, still on his feet at the one. Pimpo has to drive him back at the last second. Also in on the stop and a block, a great block thrown by Dean Caliguire that nearly got him into pay game. Mike Gottfried getting set to send the play back in as you look at Hayward and that uniform is stretched to the maximum. There are many, many people in this country, pro scouts included, who feel he could step right into a pro on a pro team today in the NFL and play immediately. He's that good, he's that big, and he's only a junior. Lou Holtz said when he lines up in the backfield, Notre Dame coach said he looks like a misplaced tackle. Second and goal from the two. Chuck in motion, this is Hayward, and Hayward gets hit by Tempo at the line of scrimmage, and it's stopped. What a hit that Mark Pimpo delivered. Mark Pimpo, number 37, a junior linebacker out of Strongsville, Ohio, the third member of his family to attend the Naval Academy. He's the leading tackler. He just makes up for a lack of size with effort, and he was in the right position as we see him on the left of the screen. Number 37 coming to the play. There he is. He meets him head on. He's 217 going against Hayward at 268. Another great look from this level. Boom. That's all you can say. Navy's defense holding here, third and goal. Hit three for three and third down conversion. And off Hayward, he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Pretty, pretty tough to stop somebody that big who can vault the line that well. And that was just, just a great effort by the Pittsburgh line as they get down and into their blocks. But look at Trey Hayward get up off the ground. Wow. Nice block by Chirpak. Also step Nasty. Here it is again. No contest. No contest at all. Not when he gets that high and can get that kind of generate that kind of power. Here comes Jeff Van Horn on for the point after. It's not an automatic with him. He's 12 for 15. So to say he struggled a little bit. The holder is Bill Osborne. Ed Huebner, the long snapper. Pimpo trying to provide a distraction, and here's the kick. It's good. So Pitt steps up on top at the 4.52 mark. They take the lead on Craig Hayward's touchdown run of just a yard, and it is Pittsburgh 7, Navy nothing. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Pittsburgh taking the early lead on Navy by a score of 7 to nothing as you look at the backdrop of Chesapeake Bay. And the scoring drive, 16 plays, 67 yards, 8 minutes and 15 seconds, a picture-perfect drive. Oh, do coaches like that kind of a drive? It eats up the clock, it keeps the ball on the ground, mix it up with a few passes, but most importantly, they're playing there, they're controlling the game early. And I think it's very key for the Navy to get back in this right away. They've outscored their opponents 106 to 19 in the first half, and you know they've only allowed one first-half touchdown thus far this season. Hayward's seventh touchdown of the year. More importantly, there were no no mistakes, no penalties, no breakdowns for them. Something that plagued Pittsburgh early on. They've had 60 penalties thus far this season for a bundle of yardage. They've got more penalty yardage than many teams have in total offense on days. Uh, they're trying to career, correct that. They saw signs of it against Notre Dame as you look at Jeff Van Horn set to kick off. Van Horn to kick, and it's going to be Stackhouse and also Pace. Kick is to Pace. Takes it at the six. Over 25, and he's hit and brought down at the 26-yard line, and there is a flag at the 24. The tackle made by Dan Crossman, a backup defensive back for Pittsburgh. 
could be a clip. That's exactly what it's going to be. So this is what Navy does not need to start off a drive back from their 22 margin half the distance. As we know, watching the wishbone this year with Army, op opposing teams love to get your wishbone back in the 20 or beyond and let you drive 80 and 90 yards. And I'm sure that uh, Elliot Uzelak does not want to be in this position with his offense, particularly for his inexperienced and young quarterback, Alton Grizzard. So instead of starting at the 26-yard line, Navy will start from their own 12. As you look at the Pittsburgh defense. Grizzard, full house back to you. Gives this time to the halfback on the play coming straight ahead, and that's going to be James Bradley. Out of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, Bradley averaging 4-6 a carry. Little counter play. They just hand, he opens up to the fullback, hands back. Bradley finds a little seam on the right side, running over the right guard, Tim Hoffaker, and he got enough to get good yardage, and that's what they need. Good percentages on the first down call as we look at Bradley, 32, the sophomore. They want to run the football, and it may be today that most success will come inside rather than going outside with the quarterback or the trailback. Nice opening play of seven. Makes it second and three, and here's the fullback. This is going to be Curtis Brown, and he's got the first down. An important first down, I would say, for Navy. Working behind their bigger people in the offensive line, Matt Felt. And there is one of their bigger people right there. <laughs> Matt Felt, the center, is a senior at 6'3", 245. Hoffaker, we call his name. He's 6'4", 257. And the left guard, Joe Brennan, at 6'4", 260. That's the heart of the offensive line, and they've got some size to match up with Pittsburgh. First and 10 for Navy. This is Grizzard, pitch to the corner to Bradley. And Bradley's got some running room out to about the 29-yard line. Driven out of bounds by Gary Richard. Out of Denver, Colorado. Let's see it again. Excellent read by Grizzard. Watch them come on the fullback, 23. And as soon as he sees that pressure, he kicks this ball out just in the nick of time. He gets it out to his pitch man, James Bradley, who gets on the corner for good yardage. About five yards, second and five. And there you see Grizzard, who last week rushed for 225 yards against Penn. That's more than any Navy quarterback has done in the history of the academy. A year ago, he was starting right now for Green Run High School. And now here he is playing against Pitt. Here's his first throw. The down that is complete into the flats to Hughes. Hughes gets it out to about the 45 to the 46 yard line. And this is what Navy has to do. They can't continue to just run at Pittsburgh. A little play action fake. He waits for Hughes to come on the slam pattern and use the senior at six foot 175 pounds, makes the catch, gets up field, and they'll move the sticks for another Navy first down. Nice drive out to the 47 yard line after an 18 yard game. Grizzard is one for one. Navy's only thrown 69 passes between two quarterbacks, John Nobers and Al. Grizzard so far this season. First and ten, they try the fullback straight ahead. And they go to the halfback Bradley instead on an inside run. They get it up over the 50-yard line to about the 49. As you look at James Bradley. All at Elliot Uzelak, the coach of Navy, wants is a good first down call. He wants three or more yards in that first down, so he's on schedule when he comes up second and third. He is ahead of schedule now, second and five for this fleet quarterback, Alton Grizzard, number 16. And pit territory. Nearly a fumble on the exchange. The fullback Brown gets it and gets close to the first down. Against a team like Pittsburgh, it's, it's important to have a good inside game. It has to be because they, they picked up early that they're defending the pitch and the quarterback, so they're slipping the ball inside over the fullback. He gets behind the right guard and the right tackle, Bruce Bennett, number 69. Good yardage, third down and short. Most importantly, they're in Pittsburgh territory, so it's a four down zone for them. Certainly is at the 44 yard line. Haven't called the name of Zeke Gatson so far today. A small success for Navy at this point. Third and short. Brown gets it. No, it's a pitch. Instead, it goes to the corner. He's got the first down and go to Paul Parker. A nice play fake that got me at first. Well, I want to tell you, Alton Grizzard for a plebe has quick hands and very decisive. Watch this pitch. There's the fake. Good fake by the fullback. He makes the fake as he goes in there, but he puts that ball right on the corner. Very quick hands. You know why he's starting as a plebe. 
Even a, a great fake, it's got to be pointed out, as Troy Washington made the tackle. There's Parker and what he has done the so far this season. 6-1 average and a touchdown so far for Navy. And this wishbone, when it works, you can spring people. And he's a legitimate big back at 6-3. He's got the speed, he's got the size, he's from Syracuse, New York. And he's got a lot of confidence in himself in talking with him yesterday afternoon. But most importantly, the confidence is building for quarterback Alton Grizzard. If they can sustain a drive and come away with points, it'll go a long way to helping this Navy offense. Pittsburgh with five first downs, with Navy starting to catch up. First and ten. And this is Bradley for big yardage to the 25-yard line. Owens has to come up and make a stop. Doing a very good job inside. Number 74, Joe Brennan makes the block. And he puts an Hoffaker, the other guard, and they're working very well on the defensive tackles for Pitt. Pitt plays a four-man front. The tackles line up on the guards. It's an even front. They're making those kind of blocks and giving that back a chance to get up inside in the seam and make yardage. Two wide outs now for Grizzard on second down and four. Goal, 31! six. Grizzard to keep. Now pitches. This is Parker. And Parker gets knocked out of bounds by Washington at the last second at the 21-yard line. And there's the mascot. They got our goat this time. Another first down here again. Good selection by the quarterback to fake in here. Notice the strong safety come up to make the play on the quarterback right there. That's number 91, the defensive end. Carnell Smith, and he pitches it outside, gets the first down, keeps the drive alive, and Navy, very impressive. The second time they've had their hands on the football here offensively. But Parker's size, he's as big as some of Navy's own defensive line. 203. Got the speed to boot. Give it to the first man through, and that is Curtis Brown. Brown, a senior out of Hampton, Virginia. He goes up over the 20-yard line and gets down to about the 18. Jerry Osowski, the defensive captain, making the tackle. 43 seconds left, as you saw in the first quarter. Pitt leading by a touchdown and a concerned Mike Gottfried as he sees Navy march down the field. Second down, and about six. This is going to be the halfback, Bradley, once again. Bradley gets up over the 15-yard line. Now it's going to be Brown instead. Zeke Gadsden on the stop. What you need in this offense, in this wishbone attack, is, a, is quickness at the fullback position. And Curtis Brown, they have that. They had it in Chuck Smith, their great senior running back, but he got hurt. Curtis Brown at from Hampton, Virginia, at 5'10", 193, is perfect size for this. And Curtis Brown, as we see the first quarter ending, has the quickness to get up inside. And so the first quarter ends, and it is Pittsburgh leading by a score of 7 to nothing. But Navy is driving inside the 20. We'll be back. Sometimes coming home can be unsettling. No. But not with a new Stanley Lightmaker garage door opener. One button opens your garage, but the other button turns these back into these because it turns on lights from the safety of your car with a Stanley Lightmaker. It's nice to be home. Get a transmitter free with purchase plus a chance to win an Oldsmobile in Stanley Sweepstakes. When I planned for college, I wanted several things. I looked for a school with strong academic programs and modern facilities, researching subjects that really matter. It was important for me to meet new people in a setting rich with my American heritage. And I was looking for a place that would let me do things that would prepare me for life after college. The Naval Academy gave me this and a whole lot more. It's where my opportunities began. That's what we arrived in so far today. As you see Navy driving the football. Pittsburgh has the lead. We're going to take another break. This is going to be a local break. And we'll be back after this from your local station. Picture. Okay, I'm going first. This I've got to see. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Whoa! Smile, America, because Jimmy Walker's back in the all-new Busted Loose. Saturdays at 5 on Channel 50, coming on strong. Accidents do happen. And if you've had more than your share, if your insurance is canceled or about to be canceled, 
If you have a bad driving record, or maybe you're considered a high risk, if you answer yes to any of these questions, Dean Insurance Agency can help you. So stop by Dean Insurance Agency, 6480 New Hampshire Avenue, in nearby Tacoma Park, or give Dean Insurance Agency a call at 270-1600. Former Redskin George Stark. I replaced the thrill of football by playing the D.C. Instant Lottery's Hog Wild game. Isn't there a thrill you'd like to replace? The game's for fun. The winning's for real. Big third down coming up now for Navy as they're driving as we start the second period of play. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. We're at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. The ball on the pit 14-yard line. Navy needs to get to the 10 for a first down. Alton Grizzard, pit leading, busted play. Grizzard went to hand off to the fullback, and nobody was there except Burt Grossman, and he's got the wrong uniform on. It looked to me that it was Grizzard's mistake. He went left. The entire backfield went to the right. A big bust there, and that's what happens when you got inexperience. But as we look at this, Navy's starting to move the ball on the ground. They're going to be forced to go for three now after a very impressive drive takes them inside the 20-yard line. Kicking will be Ted Fondukos. Holding will be John Nobles. Or is it going to be Grizzard? It is Grizzard. That's a change to the holder. Fondukos is three for three, as long as 39. This is 33. There's a flag on the play. Remember, it's third and four. Penalty's going to go against Navy, I believe. And this will push him out even deeper. If had it gone against Pittsburgh, it would have been a first down. As you see the indication from the official, it's a legal procedure. Bill McDonald making the call, so they'll march him back five more. And instead of 33, this will be 38 as Elliot Uzelak looks out onto the field. Uzelak, head coach for five years at Western Michigan, then joined the staff of Beauchamp Beckler at Michigan. His primary responsibility there was to coach the wishbone offense, parts of which Beauchamp Beckler used. 27-yard kick now for Ted Fondukos out of Akron, Ohio. Junior, 5'11", 187. There it is. Looks long enough. It is good. Navy's on the board. They get something out of a nice-looking drive that started at the 11-yard line. So with 14.05 left to go on the first half, it's Pittsburgh 7, Navy 3. We'll be back after this word from your local station. A lot of people who don't think they need a hearing aid may already have one. Up two streets and take a right. He said up two streets and take a right. They bring their hearing aid with them wherever they go. What do you say? He said he doesn't want to leave her, but he has to. And if they forget their hearing aid, they'll find one. Vinaigrette. She said Italian, Thousand Island, or vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. Now there's a hearing aid for people reluctant to wear one. It's called Miracle Ear. Because hard as it may be to believe, that's precisely what it is. If you have nerve deafness and have been told nothing can be done for you, Miracle Ear could help. If you can hear people talk but can't understand all the words, Miracle Ear could help. If you're concerned how a hearing aid will make you look, people probably won't even know you're wearing a Miracle Ear unless you tell them. Miracle Ear is so tiny, it's practically unnoticeable. But a hearing problem can be very noticeable. Next? She said next. Oh. Still reluctant? Maybe you need more information. Call 1-800-352-2300 and receive this free booklet. You'll get the facts you need to make an informed, intelligent decision about your hearing needs and which steps, if any, to take next. You'll even learn how you can get a free hearing test. Just call 1-800-352-2300. said speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh. Ask your doctor about Miracle Ear or call 1-800-352-2300. The phone call is free. The helpful information is free. Our hearing test is also free. Call Miracle Ear now because when you're losing your hearing, the worst thing to do is nothing. What did he say? You are watching WFTY-TV, Channel 50. Before, the scenery is indeed beautiful here at Annapolis. As you see Pittsburgh leading Navy by a score of 7-3, to three, but Ted Funduko is putting Navy on the board with a 37-yard field goal, capping a 12-play march of 67 yards. 
taking five minutes and 47 seconds off the clock. That's important, Bob, because that's exactly what Navy wants to do. Exactly. They want to keep the football. They want to have success moving it on the ground, especially inside, and they did exactly that on the drive. One mistake by Grizzard towards the end where he went in the wrong direction, but it was an impressive drive that should build their confidence that they can move the ball on the ground against this strong pit defense, and it is a strong pit defense. They've had a lot of success this year. They've got a lot of fine athletes on that side of the football. There's the kick by Brian Hathaway, a junior from Lake Oswego, and it is fumbled there initially, now picked up by Hadley, and Hadley moves to the 30-yard line. Bounces outside and gets to the 35. The kicker coming in on the stop was Hathaway, as well as Curtis Irby, number 35. But near disaster turns into a nice gain for Hadley. A 27-yard return, and that's where Pitt will start first and 10. Here's the squib kick as it comes down, and that was a deliberate squib kick as Hadley picks it up, tries to get up behind disrupted by the timing of that kick, but it does get on the corner. And good yard kick. Very good field position at the 35 yard line. Hadley out of Camden, New Jersey, one of five receivers you'll see in the ball game from time to time. Also looks good at defensive back. And here is Hayward. Hayward up to the 40 yard line. To the 45 and look at him carry. Six Navy defenders with him to the 47 yard line. One of the great plays out of the I formation is that one way and cuts it back against the grain and it shows back to the left side generate the speed and the power and all you tackle when you tackle their shoulders and when you get into his shoulder pads it's a mismatch and those are shoulder pads and a half he's got a measured wingspan right there henry tootin is split to the wide side of your screen split to the bottom is osborne First and ten, and this is Riddick. And Riddick gets stood up, but barely makes it over the 50-yard line, down to about the 49 of Navy. And in on the stop is Curtis Irby. Nice stop by Irby. Irby with 19 tackles, three for a loss, and an interception thus far this season. Very physical player, Irby, coming from the strong safety position. He's a real hitter. That's what you like at strong safety. He's got the size to go with it at 6'2", 193. Michael Stewart to the top of the screen. The bottom is Tootin. And this is Hayward once again. Again, the counter play, starting up to the left side, cutting it back to the right side, that time behind the trap block of Dean Caliguire. And as we look at the rushing leaders in the country, we see where Craig Hayward is with 130 yards per game. Very consistent. You don't see a lot of 200-yard games there. It usually averages about, uh, in the, as you say, 130, but it's very close to it. So far today, 12 carries, 46 yards. Not a bad start, and a touchdown is seventh of the season. Third down coming up in three. Hayward bounces outside and may have it. Yes, he does. Down to the 41-yard line. Bert LaRocca coming up to make a stop. Also Troy Holland in there. This man may see action before the afternoon is through. They're just about matched up, I think. There he is, Craig Hayward, number 34, the junior from Passaic, New Jersey. They call him Ironhead. He's Pitt's fourth fourth already. He's the fourth all-time leading rusher in just his junior year. Elsewhere in the country, Duke and Maryland having out not too far from here in College Park. They're retiring Jack Scarbat's number today, but it hasn't been successful so far. Iowa, a two-touchdown leader over Purdue in the Big Ten. As we see a measurement here, Looked to me that he had it, and he does have it by a football and a half. Pitt now four for four on third down conversion. And that's the difference in the size. The offensive line of Pitt is much bigger. Got a big weight advantage over the Navy line, and that's all they're doing. They're going after him on short yardage, driving him off the ball, getting the ball deep to Craig Hayward, and just letting him run. First and ten. Hurd and Tootin are in the game as wide receivers now. Mike Gottfried will switch all day. Looking to throw as Janella wants it all. He wants Hurd upfield, and it is going to be incomplete. Covering on the play is Larry Dickinson. As you look at Hosea Hurd, he caught four passes this season, three of them touchdowns. Dickinson, 19, is a cornerback. He was expected to be a wide receiver for Navy, but they needed him on defense. He's got the speed to run with somebody like Hosea Hurd, the sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia. And this is just a fly pattern up the sideline. He's got good position right from the start. 
The ball is thrown short and away. Michael Stewart into the ball game now, along with Bill Osborne. Osborne is a slot to the top side of your screen. It's second and ten for Pitt, and they go to the fullback Riddick on the draw. Riddick gets to the 39, and very little beyond that. David Lowe out of Satellite Beach, Florida, picking him up with a stop. That time Pitt spread the defense by putting twins out to the wide side of the field, and they tried to slip the ball to the fullback inside Riddick and let him cut it back against the grain. Good job of the Navy defense. And now, once again, Sal Janella with the ball sitting inside the 40-yard line of uh, Navy has a third down and long. Third and seven to be exact. And he's got three wide receivers in the game. We might look for Reggie Williams to the bottom of your screen to get some action. He's looking at him, certainly. Big rush is on, and Lowe will wrap it up in the backfield. David Lowe backs him up back at the 47-yard line. He was looking all the way at Williams. That time, David Lowe coming from the outside, from the inside linebacker position, just runs over number five, the fullback, Riddick. Watch the block on the left side of your screen. He just runs right over him and goes right to the ball carrier, in this case, the quarterback, and makes a big play and forces the first punt of the afternoon for Pitt. John Rask from North Huntington, Pennsylvania, averaging 41 a kick this season, having a great year kicking. Larry Dickinson set to receive. He calls for it. A fair catch at his own 13-yard line. A nice punt by Rask, but even better yet, a great defensive series by Navy. 10-23 left to go in the first half of play. It's Pittsburgh leading Navy by a score of 7-3, but Navy will get the ball back. It's a pathway that leads from here to tomorrow, from sea to shining sea. of a great fish dinner. Now, Long John Silver's presents Crispy Breaded Fish, a classic collection of golden hits. It's one fabulous platter at one low price. You'll get two big pieces. Fries, fries, fries. Look at my fries, fries. And much, much more. Available only at Long John Silver's. For the everyday price of just two sixty-nine. dollars New Crispy Breaded Fish. Counter girls are standing by. 10-23, one of the many forms of transport to the stadium this afternoon as you see Pittsburgh leading Navy by a score of 7-3 in the second quarter. 10-23 left to go, and Navy has just finished a very successful defensive stand. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This broadcast is a copyright presentation and a use of this broadcast without the express permission of the University of Pittsburgh and the United States Naval Academy is prohibited. Flags fly in the first play from scrimmage as Brennan provides a block for Curtis Brown as he gets up to the 15-yard line, but the play may be called back. Yes, the left side of the line, and particularly the left guard here, jumps. Bill McDonald making the original indication. A little over-anxious, a little over-anxious. Watch the left side there, and there is number 74, Joe Brennan, moving before the snap. Brentwood, Tennessee, senior. On the top offensive lineman, a rare mistake on Navy's part. Second drive that they started with a penalty. Hughes is wide to the top side. Wizard gives full of speed ahead, and it goes out to about the 15-yard line. A nice gain of about five yards on the play. Curtis Brown, the fullback. Curtis Brown inside. He's been a factor so far in this ball game by being able to get up in that seam and run with authority. There he is, 23 from Hampton, Virginia. 5'10", 193 pounds. That's David Lowe. He made that great stop, that sack of Janela that forced the punt. He's a mild-mannered youngster. I had an opportunity to talk with him yesterday. Very confident. Is the average gain on first down? Just about even. Pitt is second and long. Or rather, Navy is second and long. Here's Grizzard pitching at the last moment. His man wasn't there, intended for Bradley, and luckily it went out of bounds. Excellent job on the corner that time by Terrell Austin, who came in the game, number 19. He's the nickelback, the fifth back, and Osafsky, the great linebacker who missed the early part of the season with injury, he was there too. But they're running the football back to the short side, into the boundary, and here, as he looks to pitch the ball, is, as you can see, the pressure put on by Austin 
made it impossible for the pitch man to get the ball. Austin made the play. Terrell Austin, a senior out of Sharon, Pennsylvania, comes in as that extra defensive back. One of the few to extricate himself from that Norby Walters mess. Here comes Grizzard to throw on third and long. Has a man open. Hughes that overthrows him into the sideline. Covering on the play is Quentin Jones of Pittsburgh, and the punting unit comes on. That time, a little play action away from the flow. They tried to run a counter pass. Single receiver out there. Quentin Jones, the senior, played it well. Forcing a punt here. Very important now for Navy to cover this punt and get, not give up field position to Pittsburgh. Newark, only a 34-yard average, and he's had one blocked thus far this season. And Austin will go back in punt formation. Back at the 47-yard line. Here's the kick. He gets it away. Nice line drive. Austin gets a chance to return, but it's a reverse. And it goes to Gary Richard. Richard at the 30, at the 20, inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. The reverse works, much to the chagrin of Elliot Uzelak. Big block thrown by Matt Levina. But great execution on the part of the deep backs. They made this thing go. Watch this kick. It comes right up the right side on the right hash mark. That's Watch Austin. the exchange right there as Austin hands it off, and they get the blocking on the corner for Gary Richard, the cornerback, and this is a beautifully executed punt return. Gets him in great field position. 9.15 left in the first half. Pitt in great situation. Back after this from your local station. Accidents do happen. And if you had more than your share, if your insurance is canceled or about to be canceled, if you have a bad driving record, or maybe you're considered a high risk, if you answer yes to any of these questions, Dean Insurance Agency can help you. So stop by Dean Insurance Agency, 6480 New Hampshire Avenue, in nearby Tacoma Park, or give Dean Insurance Agency a call at 270-1600. It's time for Dash's semi-annual sale. Washington's finest men's clothier is offering reduced prices on European and American designer menswear. Wool Blend designer dress pants, nationally advertised at $70, only $29. Cotton Blend designer dress shirts, $9.50. And Poly Wool year-round three-piece suits, $119. Dash's semi-annual sale. Don't miss it. Pittsburgh leading 7-3 in the second quarter with 9.15 left to go on a 44-yard return of a 42-yard punt. On a reverse to Gary Richard has Pittsburgh in excellent field position at the 8-yard line. First and goal, Hayward and Wright for second. Out of the eye formation for Sal Janela. This is Hayward. Iron head to the 5. Falls to the two-yard line into the grasp of Mike Jimenez and Mark Finkel. And this is where he's at his best. You get the ball deep to him in the backfield, and he just generates so much as he runs up on the right side that time behind Stepnowski and his center, Bukowskis. Those two blockers on the point of attack as we watch Gary Richard take this ball up the sideline. Great blocking on the corner there from number 16, Robert Bradley, a defensive back, and he's being escorted up the sideline. Beautiful play. Gets them down inside the eight, and now they're down at the three. Second and goal for Janela. Same backfield set. This is Hayward, and Hayward with a great open field tackle. Brought in there by number 81, Ray Worthington, out of Pearson, Florida. Worthington, a great one-on-one -on -one play. It was just he and Craig Hayward. They say he's a great technique player. That means he plays his position. Look at how low he is as he takes on the block of Prentice Wright, number 42, and gets underneath and gets to... Craig Hayward, where really the only place you can knock him down around his ankle. There is Worthington from no Pearson, Florida. We show him at six feet, but I stood next to him. I'm 5'11 yesterday, and he, he looked about 5'9, but he got below the block that time and made a nice tackle. Third down, goal from the six, loss of three. Janela the throw. Janela has a man, and it is knocked away. Knocked away on the play, and it looks like, let's see who got a piece of it. I think it's Mark Pimpo. It was. Pimpo nearly intercepted. It was, Pimpo. Great effort, and this is where they got to reach down. Watch 37 right in the middle of the screen as he gets up and gets his hands right there and almost comes up with the interception. Big play again by the pit, by the uh, Navy defense led by Pimpo, the junior, the leading tackler on the team. And again, Pittsburgh now has to settle for going for three. And Van Horn will do the duties 
From the 12, a 22-yard kick this season, 6 for 14. But he's been automatic inside the 29. Holding Osborne. Here's the kick. It is up. And it is good. Osborne pushes Pitt's lead out to seven points with 7.50 left to go in the first half. Pittsburgh drives for a score after the big reverse, but they come up with only three. They lead by seven. Sir, 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 did you say you forgot if you signed those papers? I don't recall. I don't recall. Don't recall, sir, sir. Is it true you doze off during meetings? Sir, sir. Sir, Sir, what about the rumors that you're a philandering, two-timing womanizer? You know, we do have photographs. Boy, could I go for a Jenny now. There are times when only one beer will do. Smooth, cold-aged Genesee. Now, in this photo, you're dressed like little Bo Peep standing on your head. Sir, we... The Great American Face. Rugged. Distinctive. The Great American Razor. Atra. Solid. Pivots for closeness. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Atra, only from Gillette. New England fans will be in your area next week at Chestnut Hill, where the Tennessee Volunteers will come calling. 12 noon kickoff, and the week after, we'll follow Boston College out to South Bend, Indiana, as they'll take on Notre Dame. So stay with us. Welcome back. The pleasant view off the bridge that goes over the Severn River in Annapolis that flows into the Chesapeake River and the Chesapeake Bay on a nice fall day here in Annapolis as we have gone 750 deep into the second quarter. And we look at Pittsburgh having to settle for three points after starting a drive at the Navy eight-yard line. And there's no question that Navy is playing with great emotion today. People came in here figuring they'd be blown out early, but they've hung in there on defense with big plays from individuals like Worthington and, of course, Pimpo, the linebacker, the leading tackler. And on offense, they've generated enough offense to have enough confidence in themselves to be hanging in this ball game, trailing by seven points with 7.50 left in the second quarter. And they're to get the ball back now off this kickoff. Van Horn getting set to kick for Clay Stackhouse. And also Pace back in there. That's Jason Pace, the Plebe. Plebe players or freshmen, as you will, dotting the lineup for Navy. And they performed well thus far today. And Horn kicks. But this will be Stackhouse at the 13. Stackhouse gets outside to about the 26-yard line. And he's collared down quickly there on the play by James Turner, number 88, a backup defensive tackle. And so Navy will get the ball in the best starting position, ironically, that they've had all afternoon at their own 27-yard line. We have uh, a lot of plea players uh, throughout the lineup for Navy because of injuries. Elliot Uzelak said his plea group, that first class he recruited, is a good group of athletes. He didn't want to play in this early necessarily, but he's been forced to, and they're coming through for him in the, under the pressure situation. First and 10, maybe 27. And off goes to the second man through. That is going to be Bradley, the halfback, trying to follow Curtis Brown into the hole, which barely existed off right tackle to the 28-yard line. They closed down that time, and, and Walker, uh, the outside uh, defensive tackle, closed down and did not give him the cutback off that little counter play Curtis that they run successfully there. off the wishbone, where the quarterback opens up and hands back as we look at Elliott. Use a lack. Navy's 32nd head football coach. He was an assistant here in 1971 and 72. Second and one. Straight ahead up over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Curtis Brown on the tackle, or rather on the carry. Jerry Osowski, the middle linebacker, helped out, as well as Mark Spindler and Jerry Wall. We notice also here, Bob, that uh, Pitt has two defensive ends in here, Carnell Smith, and they also are using Nelson Walker, a sophomore and a freshman because of their speed and their quickness, and they got him up on the line of scrimmage, really playing almost what amounts to an eight-man front against the running of the wishbone, trying to outman him by putting more players up against it right on the line of scrimmage. So they got eight men right on top of the football. Third and five, Navy is one for four in third down conversion. Grizzard to keep. Grizzard trying to pitch, but no way. Carnell Smith meets him and throws him for a loss back at the 27-yard line, a loss of five. Pitt just gambling that they won't put the ball up, that they won't throw on third and four or five. That time they guessed right. As they came out, they were going to run the option. And the quarterback here, Grizzard, is really looking to pitch to his trailback, Bradley, but he never has a chance. 
He ate the ball, took it off, and now, with a little over six minutes left, Navy has to give the football up again. Grizzard had 225 yards last week. He's minus 10 today as you look at Andy Newark kicking to Terrell Austin. Fourth down and about 10. Here comes the kick. A beauty by Newark. Drives Austin back to his own 20. Finds a seam at the 35. To the 40. At midfield and at the Navy 39-yard line. Oftentimes you get that big booming kick, but sometimes you can outkick your coverage. That time they were concerned about the flanks where they reversed the ball last time and they vacated the middle and gave the punt returner a chance to come back in the middle, which you never do. And he's got the speed to get upfield and make the play. Terrell Austin has been a big factor in this game as the fifth defensive back and as the punt returner. Now watch this. Navy spreads out to the side. They're looking for a reverse or a handoff. Instead, he cuts it back up the middle. That's athletic ability. Good judgment on his part to make the play. Orlando, Florida, and Pitt starts once again in Navy territory at the 39. Janela gives to Hayward. Hayward off left tackle. Not an awful lot there. Troy Holland and Mike Jimenez wrap him up for the stop at the 39, maybe the 38-yard line, a gain of barely a yard, one of his smallest gains of the day. As long as they can keep them to that kind of yardage on first down, then they can hope to force Pitt into third down and long and gamble on the fact that they can either put pressure on Janela or do a good job of covering the receivers. Right now he comes up with split back. This is normally a passing set for the Pitt Panthers. I would think this is a down where Janela would have to convert second and long. And Janela with time. That's blocked from right. Pass is complete. And it is taken by Michael Stewart at the 32-yard line. It's a gain of about six. Larry Dickinson on the stop. And what a great catch by Stewart. This is a tough pass. Give Janela a lot of credit. He hung in the pocket and waited. He, that was not his primary receiver. And watch this catch by Stewart in the flat. He holds onto the football. The senior from Norwalk, Ohio, 6'4". He's got a lot of leaping ability, and he showed it there as he come up with the catch. But again, Janela's looking at a third and about five. And he calls timeout, so Pittsburgh burns one of its three here in the first half with 4.22 left to go on the first half of play. Janela to talk things over with Mike Gottfried and also Mike Dickens, the offensive coordinator. It's Pitt leading by seven, 10 to three. And we'll be back after this. Maryland, there you see Pittsburgh leading Navy in the second quarter by a score of 10 to three. Elsewhere around the country, some other scores. We might find some very interesting ones down the road in College Park. The Terrapins leading 7-6 over Duke. On the Big Ten, Iowa continues uh, in the first quarter, shutting out Purdue. 14 uh, SEC score. Here's a surprise. Kentucky leading Georgia 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Third and five now for Sal Janella and Pitt. Three wide receivers out. Big third down conversion and a long count. Janella looking. Wants a quick out and gets his man at Stewart complete at the 33, but he fell short of the first down. Pimpo making the stop as Stewart appeared to lose his footage. He had lots of time, and he finally had to go to his outlet out here and watch Irby, number 35, the strong safety, come up and just make the tackle to keep him short of the first down. That time, Janela came over the ball and automatic. He looked over the defense. He took a lot of time to find who he wanted to come to, and eventually he came to his wide receiver, but Irby was there to make a big play. And you're looking at number 35, Curtis Irby from Richmond, Virginia. Pitt forced to go on it only after only a two-yard gain on the play. This is too deep for Van Horn, and here is Hayward. Hayward gets the call, but we've got a flag. That'll call it back. Let's see what the call is going to be. Flag was over on the Pitt sideline. It's going to go against Pitt. The penalty will go against Pitt. A legal procedure, Pittsburgh. Let's see it. Watch the top Watch of the, the screen. Top. You see the tight end jump offside. That seaman, the tight end, number 86, just moves just before the snap. That's fatal. That's not concentration. I'm sure that Mike Godfrey's very upset about that. He not only had a first down, he had a potential touchdown with Hayward on the sideline, and now Pitt is forced to punt. Rasp would do the honors for midfield. He'll try to kick it inside the 10. Fair catch called for, and it bounces out of bounds. So we'll wait for the mark by the official. And the Navy defense, again, dodges the bullet and keeps in this football game with 3.26 on the clock. They still trail by only seven points. 
3.26 left, as Bob said, and that's where Navy will take over as Pittsburgh fails to convert again on that second and long. Here's what we've done so far today. Hayward with a one-yard run, his seventh touchdown of the season. Navy had a long drive capped by Franducos's 37-yard field goal, and then Pitt lost an opportunity to score six when they returned a punt to the eight-yard line and had to settle for a Jeff Van Horn 22-yard field goal. And that's where we are with 3.26 left to go in the first half. Navy coming out. Grizzard at the control. So the wishbone offense. Hand off goes to Curtis Brown. Straight ahead to about the 19-yard line. And he goes down. The outstretched arms. It looks like it's going to be number 98, Tony Saragusa. Saragusa seeing spot duty. He's got a torn calf muscle. He's an outstanding player at 6'5", 270. And he uh, was an All-America candidate. Got hurt earlier in the year, is back today to play limited duty. But the truth of the matter is, is that Pitt is starting to pinch those tackles down to shut off the inside and not give the counter or the fullback play to the wishbone offense. Back to throw, Grizzard after play action. And he throws a ground ball to Bradley out in the flats. It would have been good for a first down. But he hurried the ball. He sure did, and that was the problem. That's the inexperience, the nervousness. He came up on second and long. He just didn't wait for Bradley to get open. He might have opened up a little later, but he threw too soon. He threw it in the ground, and now he stops the clock. 2.49 remain. He's got a third and long, and they may come after him here. North Carolina State leading seventh-ranked Clemson down in Death Valley in the first quarter of play, 7 to nothing. Eight bowl scouts, eight different bowls are watching that game. From Clemson's standpoint in particular. Well, we got a few bowl scouts here watching this right. Peach Bowl, Sun team. Bowl is here. And we've got a timeout called by Navy with 2.49 left to go, and Alton Grizzard comes to the sideline facing a third and nine situation. But we talked with the, their offensive coordinator, actually their quarterback coach, Gary Seaman, as far as the passing game for Army, they want to stay conservative. They want to stay conservative because they don't want to put they want to put Grizzard in a difficult position. They want to make it simple, maybe one individual receiver. It depends on who the hot receiver is. Today, they've looked for their back out of the backfield once, and that was uh, Curtis Brown, or their wide receiver, uh, Carl Jordan or Don Hughes. But they haven't thrown the ball much. This is a situation where if they want to hold the football and get a first down, they're going to have to do it now as we look at uh, Elliot Uzelak and John with his quarterback. And John Nobers, the man who started originally for Navy. I said Army originally. It is Navy today. And there's Elliot Uzelak, eighth season as a college head coach. Yes, he is. He coached here as an assistant back in 1971 and 72. Went on to become the head coach of Western Michigan for seven years to the University of Michigan for four years as an assistant. And then, of course, he took over here. And when he took the job, Bo Schembechler said he's a perfect choice. He knows the academy, and he will give them a highly successful program. Told us yesterday he talked with Bo Schembechler up in Ann Arbor, and Bo told him they had about a quarter inch of snow on the ground. Elliot's, Elliot told him, he said, well, I may be one in five, but I got no snow on the ground here. That's right. But he's got a third down and nine, and he doesn't want to give up the ball before this half ends because he's in this ball game, only trailing 10 to three to pick. Navy one out of five in third downs. Newman and Jordan are the wide receivers for Grizzard, who's rolling to his left. Sets up, fires. It is complete. And it is taken out there by Jason Pace. It's going to be good enough for the first down out over the 32-yard line. And Pace and Pace. That was Pace. Another plead from Atlanta, Georgia, coming out of the backfield. Little sprint action. Watch the quarterback sprinting to his left. He pulls up, and he gives Pace, who was at the last halfback spot, a chance to get out into the flat. He's got to be covered by a linebacker. He's wide open. He stays in bounds, and he gets a first down. And here it is. Nice pass by the plead from one plead to another. There it is, right up field. Two out of four. Grizzard is 32 yards. Carried by Curtis Brown on first down. Gets up over the 30-yard line as we close in on the two-minute mark here in the first half of play. Tony Saragusa making the stop for Pitt. Saragusa back in the game at the defensive tackle position. They didn't want to use him very much, but they played him now because he's, he's very strong inside and he's shutting off that fullback dive as well as the counter play. Navy comes out, second down now, and about eight yards to go. Grizzard pitching on the reverse to Hughes. Hughes turns his shoulders, 
Gets to the 35, out to the 37, where he's tackled by Quentin Jones in a nice open field stop. And that shows the athletic ability of Quentin Jones. One-on-one, -on -one, and the senior from Pompano Beach just held his ground and made the play. He's a tough physical competitor, great agility. Watch this, the little reverse as he pitches back to 91. Don Hughes trying to run the reverse, and you'll see Jones come up on the corner. Nice tackle. Only three yards on the play, even though it covered about 20 laterally. As Shane Smith comes out of the lineup, and Jordan is in at the bottom of your screen at split end on third, and now they say about seven. Out of the wishbone. Movement early. Brown goes full speed ahead. Up over the 40 to the, about the 41 yard line. They mark him. Looked like somebody jumped early, Bob, but I guess they won't flag him for it. It was again the left guard, Joe Brennan, who looked like he came off a little hard. They didn't call it, but uh, they just slipped the ball to the fullback. He didn't get the first down. Pitt stopped him, and they called a timeout immediately. So they have just under a minute left to go in the half. They want to get the ball back with a chance to get a score. They have one timeout remaining. 59 seconds left to go in the first half as the Navy crowd prepares for the halftime show. Next week, we'll be live from Alumni Stadium in Boston, Massachusetts, where the Boston College Eagles will take on the volunteers from Tennessee out of the SEC. Great intersectional battle of those two teams as you watch Great American Independent Football, brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Fourth down now coming up for Navy. Navy is catching up in time of possession this first half. 12.59, that's what they want. Because they've been able on third down on defense to stop Pitt and get the ball back to their offense. But they've got to open up their offense this second half to get this Pitt defense, which is now lining up with nine and ten men on the line of scrimmage to stop the wishbone. I'm sure they're going to go in at halftime and say, hey, we've got to open it up a little bit. Duke, another field goal to take the lead over Maryland. Nine to seven in an ACC battle in the second quarter. And our score, surprisingly low, with a minute left to go in the first half, only 13 points on the board. And Pittsburgh leading 10-7 is Andy Muick. Today, he's had a nice day. Three punts for 42 yards, long as 55, but he's had two of them return for big yardage as Terrell Austin gets set to return. Here comes the kick. Austin at the 19, drops it, and it goes out of bounds. At the 20-yard line. Bad turn of events for Pitt as Muick punched them deep, a 40-yard punt. Question now is, will uh, Pitt, with the ball sitting uh, just over their 20-yard line, or at the 20-yard line, will they go into their two-minute offense and try and get upfield and get a shot at least at a field goal? But with uh, 50 seconds on the clock, ahead 10-3, to three, we'll see what Mike Godfrey's uh, thinking might be here. Bill Osborne into the game. Good possession receiver. He and Reggie Williams come split wide to the bottom side. On first and 10. They'll go to Hayward. Right up the middle. Hayward gets about three yards out to about the 23-yard line. Mark Pimpo stops him. Bob, I've got to be impressed with the way that Navy has defended the inside run. Navy is very quick. They're outmanned in size, but they're very quick, and they've made some big plays when they had to, particularly with the two guys on that, in that defense that do it all the time. Pimpo, the inside linebacker, and Worthington, the outside linebacker. They've made several plays today, three in particular, that have stopped drives for Pittsburgh. 20 seconds in rolling, second down and seven now in motion. That is Stewart. There's a handoff to Hayward. Nothing fancy here for Pitt, and they're contented to go into the locker room up by a touchdown. With six seconds left, Worthington makes a stop on Hayward, and that'll be the last play of the first half of action. The Navy crowd cheers, and well, they should. The midshipmen have done very well here in the first half to hold this powerful Pitt team at bay, and at halftime, it is Pittsburgh leading Navy by a score of 10 to 3. Stay with us because we've got some great things for you. We'll take a look at the Week in Review, our Great American Champion feature, and of course, looking at the, the football scoreboard around the country, and a whole lot more. So stay with us. Total yards dead even at 102. But most amazingly, the rushing yard is only 72 yards for Pittsburgh and uh, 30 yards passing, but 70 yards rushing for Navy. Pittsburgh has had trouble. I think, Bob, in the key situations, the trouble has been in that second and long situation. They've been third and long too much. And again, the question comes back on Sal Janella. Okay, he's got to be able to deliver the ball in the clutch. This was the complaint about him earlier in the year. He's under pressure now because he may have to throw the ball in the second half. Hayward on target for another 100-yard day. It would be his seventh. 
Navy has Curtis Brown, their fullback for 36 yards. Grizzard is two for four and 32. Mewitt punting 41 yards on four kicks, but he's had two return for big yardage. Very important here as we open the second half, Navy elected to take the ball in the first half, take the kickoff. They will kick now. Pitt will get the ball early. If the Navy can hold them early on in this third period, it could be a very interesting second half. As you look at Brian Hathaway, and now to Billy Owens and Michael Hadley. Billy Owens to the top of the screen. Here comes the kick. It's a swiver, and the second half is underway. And taking it is Owens at the 12. Owens up the middle of the field, hits the wedge, and gets out to about the 29-yard line. Nice return on the play of about 27 yards. In on the stop for Navy is going to be Curtis Irby on the tackle. So Pittsburgh will come out first and 10, and it rests on the shoulders of that young man, Sal Janella. Pitt's possession so far, their first resulted in a touchdown. But they punted twice, and of course, halftime took care of the fifth possession. Here's Janella to throw to the flats. It is incomplete. Intended for Reggie Williams out there in the flats. Covering was Darren Fullwood, a sophomore from Hampton, Virginia. They come with the split backs. Whenever they're in split backs, or up to this point, they've been throwing the football. That time he elected to go to his wide receiver, but he threw it short. The receiver was wide open. So they tried to change their tactics a little bit and come up throwing the football right away. Maybe for Pittsburgh, 24 rushes, eight passes thus far in the ball game. They come up in a passing situation here, second and ten. And instead they go to the delay handoff to Hayward. Hayward trying for yardage, and Dickinson drives him out of bounds. He carries Dickinson and Pimpo out of the 35-yard line. It's a gain of about six. Once again, you, you, it's the counter play. Watch this. He steps to his right. He takes that ball. He wants to break it back. He follows the, the pulling guard to that side, Stepnoski. But the play is made by 81 again, Worthington, who forces him inside and back to where he can get pursuit. And there's the pursuit with Pimpo chasing him down with the cornerback Dickinson. Good job for the defense. Third down again for Janela. Third and five at the 35-yard line. Janela back to throw. Janela waiting. He's in the ground. Throws to the flats to right incomplete. Lots of indecision on the part of Sal Janela. He's sitting back there, and he looks like he's almost waiting, waiting, and he's waiting too long. And he sits back in here. He may be looking for just one receiver to come open. And that time he waited too long. By the time he dumped it off, the pass could not be handled, and the defense reacted to the football. This is giving a lot of confidence to the Navy defense at this part of the ballgame. Rasp kicks and hangs a beauty. Called for a fair catch by Clay Stackhouse, or is it Dave Lurch? Dave Lurch calling for it at the 26-yard line, and that's where Navy will take over first and 10. Another defensive stand by Navy. 14-33 left to go in the third quarter. It's Pittsburgh 10 and Navy 3. 14-33 left to go in the third quarter as you look at the Navy defense. And Navy's offense now out onto the field at their own 27-yard line. Here comes a handoff, and it's going to be to Bradley. Bradley moves some people out over the 30 to the 33-yard line. Here are your possessions for Navy. Look at where they've started their drives at their own 30, their own 12, 14, and 18. They've managed to get a field goal out of that. Tough position for the wishbone offense, which is basically a grinded out running attack, and they really have not had good field position. This may be the best field position they've had all afternoon, and they got the ball up over their 30-yard line, looking down at the second and five. That's Hughes to the top of your screen as Grizzard brings him out in the wishbone. Second down. Brown, the fullback, gets the call, and he gets up over the 35-yard line to about the 36. In on the stop is going to be Sarah, uh, that's John Carter. He's now playing the right tackle for Syragusa. The best success today has been inside, running the football from tackle to tackle, three yards ball inside with the counter, and the dive play. There's go Chuck go Smith, go really a, a great running back for Navy. The senior is hurt, not going to be in the ball game. Came into this ball game with 72 carries and over five yards a game and average. They're missing him today. Third down conversion here, third and about two at the 35. There's uh, the carry by the fullback once again. Straight ahead, it's going to be Curtis Brown, and he's going to be very close. Coming down to make the stop is going to be John Carter. 
Also Jerry Wall, but he's got enough for the first down. That's a good job by that interior of the line. Matt Felt, the center, and both guards. Hoffaker, uh, the right guard, number 62, Tim Hoffaker, and Joe Brennan, the left guard. They're permitting the fullback and the halfbacks on the counterplay to run up inside and find a seam and gain enough yardage. And this is the way Elliot Uzelak wants to play the ball game. He wants to keep possession. Maybe they need even in first down. They've got another one here working. First and 10 from their own of 37. Richard gives straight ahead. And it's going to be Brown again to the 40-yard line on a quick-hitting play. Osalski makes the stop here for Pittsburgh. And you can see this game developing now. They just want to hold possession, get better field position, use their kicking game, and work for a break. And Navy's playing very well. It's really their kind of ball game. They don't want to get the ball up to Pittsburgh, and they've been able to hold them on defense and now get this offense going, particularly with their running game. Out of the wishbone, gain of two, second and eight. At the 40. Bridget to throw. As a man open, that's huge. At midfield and into pit territory at the 43-yard line. Owens makes a saving tackle along with Richard, but it's a nice gain on the play and a passing down by Chris. And a possession pass. A single receiver to the right of the screen. Hughes just comes down and make, runs a stop pattern. It's not a difficult pass for the plea freshman Grizzard. He just completes it and gives Hughes a chance to run with it. Hughes is a senior from Alexandria, Virginia. Nice job. Nice execution. Now they've got the ball in pit territory. Second catch of the day is an 18-yard gain. Richard three out of five and here is Parker carrying runs into his own man that stops the progress of the play at the 41 yard line and that I think Bob probably is an example of how Pitt's firing off the line defensively that time this time Parker runs the wrong play he's coming across the formation he should stay up inside and follow his fullback 32 he elects to bounce it outside the pursuit gets to him wrong choice he comes up with a short game and the grass for Mark Spindler and there's a good one he came in as advertised didn't he? oh Spindler at 6-5 one of the most highly recruited uh, high school players out of West Grant, Pennsylvania, and he has lived up to expectations. Second and eight. This is Parker once again. Up over the 40 to the 36. Nice four-yard gain. And again, Spindler is the man who makes the tackle here for Navy. But it's, it's going to come up another third and short. Spindler, a freshman, has played all year. Most freshmen, they redshirt. But in his case, they had no intention about redshirting him. They wanted to play him right from the beginning, and he has really performed well. They had a big need for a defensive tackle, Bob, with Tony Woods out and going to the pros. They had they, they lost out of their line, and last year they had a first-down pick, a fourth-round pick. Three for eight third-down conversions. A big third down here, and going straight ahead is Brown, and he's going to be close to it. He's going to be close to it. I think he's a little bit short, and this is going to be a big choice, but they're in the four-down zone now. He may be perhaps a half yard short of the first down as he tries to run it back up inside, this time going to the left side behind Brun, his uh, left tackle, and Brennan, his left guard. That was Osowski in on the stop for Pitt. And you can bet, Bob, that Pitt is going to put everybody up front for this one. As Grizzard calls for time with 10.28, that leaves Navy with two timeouts. They trail here by seven. They have a big fourth down conversion coming. We'll be back after this from your local station. Welcome back to Navy Marine Corps Stadium. Well, he's in the game, I'll tell you. He's, he's really in it. in it. He could be literally in it. <laughs> and here's North Carolina State leading Clemson. 14 to nothing. Trying to fashion an upset down there. 29,467 are attendance here. You see Michigan State trailing Illinois early in the second quarter. And a big fourth down coming. Fourth down and two. Two tight ends. Double tight end center. He's so Grizzard. Hands to his fullback, and nothing is there. Penalty flag down. That is going to be Brown with the carry, but the flag goes down, and let's see what the call is going to be. Flag went down to the 30-yard line. It's against Pitt. I'll bet you they caught him for lining up offside. They had eight men up on the line of scrimmage, and that's what it is. Offside, they needed two to get by. And that's a bad mistake, and really that's lack of concentration. That should never happen in a crucial situation, and we're sort of seeing it. If there's a criticism to be leveled at Pitt right now, it's kind of lackadaisical. They don't look very up on defense, and surely on offense they've blown some plays. They're giving Navy a chance to be in this ball game, and that kind of mistake really hurts, and I'm sure Mike Gottfried is very upset about that. They make a lot of mistakes because of freshmen being involved in the lineup as you look at Mike Gottfried, and he's not pleased. 9-7-1 in two seasons. He's 4-2 on the road. But now his team has a lead, but Navy's driving for a score. 
at the pit 28 yard line first and 10. Grizzard wants to throw pressure's on he'll have to get rid of it does in a hurry and he was intending it there for brown but they say looks like it's going to be a flag and it was thrown in the direction of brun the legal receiver He's ineligible receiver and there's an experience as we see this call Tough call. Grizzard was in trouble. He should have gotten rid of the ball right away, but that's the inexperience. When he finally threw the ball, he threw it at 65, bro. And he's going to get called for it, and Elliott is just telling him that. Uzalak is saying, get rid of the football. Asowski really put some pressure on. He busts through early, and so does Spindler. Excellent effort by 93 Spindler, that big 6'5 freshman. And there is the, the pressure by uh, this junior linebacker, Osowski, number 55. They push him back, and that's, uh, that's a tough penalty. He was looking for Brown, but he just hit Brown in the back with it. It's a loss of down, and it's second down. Second down and 15. The ball is backed up to the 34-yard line. Maybe dearly would like more than a field goal. They'd like any type of score here in this situation. And you see the penalty scoreboard thus far this afternoon. Wizard. Goes to the fullback, Brown, and he gets to about the 31, a gain of about three. Spindler in on the stop with John Carter. And they're starting to shut off the middle better. They're bringing the tackles down. Spindler, Siragusa, when he's in the ball game, or uh, Smith, Carter, they're closing down the middle of that line of scrimmage. The 4-3 setup is a lot better against the wishbone than most of the defenses, isn't it? Most coaches feel that way because it puts the tackles on the guards and it widens it. It gives the tackles a chance to get up on the fullback real quick. And the odd look in the uh, five defense are right on the center. Richard is throwing third and long, looking over the middle. It is incomplete, intended for Newman. And a nice play made by Gary Richard. Great play by Richard. Newman had him beat on the slant pattern. And Richard, who is an All-American candidate, watch him stick his left hand in here and just get it on the football right there. Great effort. That's a tough pattern to defend against. They were playing him real tight. He's got position on Richard. But let's look at that play. It's a nicely thrown ball by Grizzard. And now the field goal unit comes on. Bundukos is going to attempt what is going to be a 48-yard field goal. Grizzard to hold, mind you, he's not their regular holder. A 42-yard field goal. It's 48, yes. 48-yarder, his longest is 41, here comes the kick. Looks like it's got enough, did it clear the crossbar? Yes! Funduko. His second field goal of the day pulls Navy to within four points. His longest previous was 39, with 9.21 left to go in the third quarter. We've got a ball game. In America, more and more people who really appreciate beer are drinking German beer. And the German beer they're drinking more of is Bex. Bex, the number one imported German beer. It's well known that the best beer in the world comes from Germany. And the best German beer in America is Bex. So when you're drinking Bex, you're drinking the best of the best. Bex, the number one imported German beer. Sometimes coming home can be unsettling. But not with a new Stanley Lightmaker garage door opener. One button opens your garage, but the other button turns these back into these because it turns on lights from the safety of your car with a Stanley Lightmaker. It's nice to be home. Get a transmitter free with purchase plus a chance to win an Oldsmobile in Stanley Sweepstakes. Welcome back to Davy Marine Corps Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. And look at this upset in the making. If it holds, that'll shake the top ten up. Consider. It'll shake the country up, and especially doing it in Death Valley. I mean, that's an impressive score. And there was an impressive drive by uh, Navy marching with 12 plays, 42 yards. They come up with three points on a 48-yard field goal by Fun Dukas. And, of course, the key play was the penalty by Pitt on fourth and two that allowed Navy to get an extra first down and move into field goal range, although not the most ideal for Ted Funduka. So this is Brian Hathaway. He can receive Hadley and Owens. Here comes the kick, and this is Owens at the five. Over to his right. At the 20, big hole opens, and then it closes quickly at the 27. He runs into Dave Lurch on the tackle for Navy. 
So Pittsburgh comes out. Still, their lead's intact, but it's a little skinnier now. Four points. And North Mike Gottfried looking for his club to generate some offense. And we haven't seen much offense since that first drive, that early score where they marched right down the field and got what they needed. But they've got to put it together here. They featured the tailback, but they've come up with third down plays and they haven't been able to convert them. Sal Janela bringing them out. That uh, Osborne and Williams split wide to the bottom side. First and 10 on the 27. And a long setback. That's Hayward. Here's the counter to Hayward. Nice opening play. Gets up over the 35-yard line. And they'll mark him down in Larry Dickinson's grasp at the 36. Curtis Irby also helped out to force him to the outside. Single back this time. They've got four receivers wide. Get the ball deep on a little counter step. And here he thunders. He gets a good block on the right side. Particularly good block by Mutos, his right tackle, and Stepnowski, his right guard. Craig Hayward tripped up by Curtis Irby and then eventually down by Dickinson. But that's a nice opening play. Even if they don't get the first down, second and short will be a nice call for them. Against Notre Dame, and there it shows, he moved into third place, uh, a passing Brian Thomas. Craig Hayward against Notre Dame carried the ball 42 times for 132 yards and two TDs. That was a pit record. So uh, he's got the durability and the stamina at 268 pounds to, to do the job. And he comes up just short of a first down on his first carry here. So it'll be second and short. But the important thing is that it won't be second and long. And that's a situation that Pittsburgh has not responded well to this far this afternoon. 901. You look at the sun splash crowd here at Annapolis. A beautiful day. 35,000, actually 29,000 looking on. Not too many empty seats. So it's going to come up second down and short. Pittsburgh at the Pittsburgh 37 yard line. Look at Hayward. 20 carries already. Carried an afternoon. Still has a good part of two periods left here. 75 yards and a score. Second and short, guess who gets it again? Hayward, first down and more. Knocked out at the 47-yard line by La Roca. Bart La Roca from San Antonio, Texas. And that's when he's dangerous on a short-yarded situation. He's able to break the line of scrimmage and not only break it, but also get outside. And he gets some blocking there on the point of attack by his tight end, Seaman, and his right tackle, McCose. And there's the quickness and the speed. Gets the ball up over the 40-yard line, and this is what they want to do. They want to get the ball to the tailback and let him execute. Harvard leading Princeton by a touchdown. Early on in that back. Janela, delayed handoff to Walker. At midfield, in Navy territory at about the 45-yard line, and we're about the 44. Walker is an interesting change of pace for Pitt. He sure is. He's quick, and he's a slashing type back, only a sophomore at 6'3". Again, the counter play. They let the guard, Galaguire, pull around and lead up through the hole. And look at that athletic ability for the sophomore from Homestead, Pennsylvania. La Roca, again, coming from the safety position to make the hit, and that's Adam Walker. Once again, second and short coming up. If you're looking at Adam Walker, averaging 6-1 a carry coming into this ball game. The problem is with Hayward carrying 21 or 30 times, he doesn't get many calls. And off goes, and there's a fumble. Fumble on the play, and Navy may have it. Navy's got it, and coming away with it is going to be Mike Musser. And you're going to see this. He's trying to fake the pitch and hand it right back in there. To the, in, the, in this set, he had uh, Hayward in the fullback position, but Janela never got the ball to the fullback. Watch this. Never got it to him. The fullback, Hayward, came too wide. He ran out of the fullback position and not the tailback position. They had Hayward and Walker in the same backfield, and Mike Musser from Vermilion, South Dakota, the senior, the big senior, may came up with the play, and that's the kind of turnover that's going to keep Navy in this ballgame for the third period. First turnover of the day, first and ten now for Navy. Grizzard on a busted play. Gets outside, he'll make something of it. At midfield, and in to Pittsburgh territory at the 43. I'd like to believe that was a naked sweep, but I don't think so. That was a busted play, and it shows the athletic ability of the plebe, Alton Grizzard. Plead from Virginia Beach, Virginia. He just beats the tackle there in the corner and knows enough to get a first down. And he's not going to punish himself. He gets upfield, cuts back inside, gets a first down on a busted play, and that's when things start to go your way. You come up with a fumble, and now you you, you make a first down off a busted play. 13-yard game for Grisham. First and 10 again. Pitches left side. Has his man on the corner. That's Bradley. And Bradley 
works his way down to the 35-yard line. And you talk about momentum, and you see it shifting right here. This is a beautifully executed option. Grizzard handled, almost mishandled that, that uh, snap, but he faked to the fullback the last instant. He passed pitches out here to his uh, trail back Bradley who gets a good block on the corner from Parker the halfback and Bradley gets that ball up close to another first down Zeke Gadsden makes the stop Boy, we haven't called Zeke Gadsden hardly at all today and that may be a story second and short for Navy and off to Brown he's got the first down at the 32 and what about the emotion level, Bob? That the difference in emotion level between these two teams seems readily apparent right now. Absolutely. You gotta give credit to Navy A Big underdog coming into this game, only winning one game last week against Pennsylvania. Outman to a great extent, playing with a plebe at quarterback, and they're really out hustling and out playing fit, and they've done it since the second period, both offensively and defensively. And right now they're threatening again. Yellow towels, it's called them first down handies. Well, maybe. Here's the pitch again. This is Parker. But Parker cannot turn the corner, and Billy Owens is the reason why. Out of Syracuse, New York, Jerry Wall helps him out, but what a great play to string it out. And that time, the quarterback, again, he made some great plays today, but he didn't hang in there with the snap. He almost, he was very fortunate to come up with it there. He's not tucking that ball into his midsection as he takes it. He's very fortunate to get the ball bounced up to him, but on the pitch, great play by Owens for strong safety. He's a tough guy. He's He's got some size, 295 pounds, senior from Syracuse, New York, and uh, he's in the grad school, you know. He's in the grad school of business. Uh, he's playing his fifth year. He's an All-American candidate, Billy Owens. Second and 11 for Navy. Here's Grizzard on the pitch. This is going to be Pace again. Pace tries to square his shoulders, finally does, and gets to the 33-yard line, which is the original line of scrimmage. Clinton Jones there to drive him out. Very tough to get to the outside on this ball club right now because they're stretching it out. Good job there by number 26, Gadsden, to force the quarterback to make a late pitch. And when he strings that out, by the time he pitches the ball to the corner, the pursuit can get there to make the play. And that's exactly what happened on the option. Pitt played it very well. And now, Grizzard and Navy are facing a third down and 10. That's a 32, but as you would say, Bob, it's in the four down area. Hughes is split wide to the top side. Pitt putting everybody up. They have a blitz on, and they sack Grizzard back at the 47-yard line. Owen streams in. They had 11 men up on the line of scrimmage. The safety was sitting a yard from the line of scrimmage, and they just came after him, and here you see it. The linebacker, 55, Oselski, gets pursuit, gets upfield, forces him to pull up. And recovering off the block on the corner was Owens again to make the tackle. Big play by the Pitt defense. Took him out of field goal territory, forcing him to punt. Muick to punt. Lofts a high one. This one will fall inside the 10, and it'll take a Navy, actually a Pittsburgh bounce, but Navy wants it to bounce there at the 13-yard line. Nice punt on the play by Andy Muick, who's had an excellent day thus far today, down in the football, Anthony Domino. They came alive. The pit defense, when they had to, came alive here and forced Navy to go away with no points. A leisurely afternoon near Annapolis. We'll be back after this word from your local station. You see the ships sailing in the Severn River as it flows into the Chesapeake Bay. And that's our score in the third quarter. Pittsburgh 10-6 over Navy. 13 yard line, the line of scrimmage for the Pitt Panthers. One lone setback. That's Hayward. Counter play to Hayward to work so far this afternoon, and it'll work again. Hayward gets up over the 25 to the 29-yard line, brought down by Curtis Irby and Bart LaRocca. But a great block here by number 62 for Pitt, Matus. Watch him come on the corner. He makes the block there, and he springs Hayward and gives him a chance to get upfield, get into the backfield, and make a big run and a big play. And that's what the Pitt offense needs. They need a series of first downs to get upfield and get some more points. At South Bend, Notre Dame trailing Southern Cal, and Tennessee, the team we'll see next week against Boston College. For the Georgia Tech. First and 10, Pitt at the 28-yard line. Walker, not much there at the 27 and falls short. It's going to be thrown for a loss, and Mike Jimenez gets in for the stop. They want to run that counter play. They've been successful with it. The best running play today, that time Jimenez got, got in penetration, 24-0. That score continues against Clemson. Jimenez got in the backfield before he could make the cut, Walker, and threw him for a loss. 
We have word of an injury now. We have not seen Lewis Riddick for some time, and he is injured. The nature of that injury, we do not know. We're seeing more of Prentice Wright now at that fullback spot, if anywhere. More single-back spot right now on second down. Second and 12. Pitch to Hayward. Hayward steps around the block and gets out to the 35-yard line. Brought down by Bart LaRocca. Also in on the stop is Troy Holland. That shows you the versatility of Craig Hayward, his ability to run inside, to run cutbacks, to run on the corner, and just a sweep. That time he got another fine block from Roman Matus, the sophomore right tackle. Gave him a chance to get up on the sideline and pick up about four yards. So it'll bring up third down in about eight here for Pitt. Another crucial third down situation for Sal Janello, the Pitt quarterback. And now with Riddick out of the ball game, they're using a one back setup, three wide receivers. Slot to the left is on for Janello the throw, pressure. Now he gets up into the pocket. He'll run it at the 34. Brought down short of the first down, or does he have it at the 37 yard line? Jimenez finally tracked him down going to be very close and that was quite an effort by Janela as he scrambles here it's drop back action he's looking upfield he's got four receivers to throw to well good job of coverage on the part of the Navy secondary and linebackers and he elects to run and he breaks a few tackles there he runs away from Pimpo the uh, number 37 gets a block downfield breaks that tackle on the corner by Irby the strong safety gets up very close to a first down there's Sal Janela Janela doesn't want to get in improvisational situations. That's where they feel that he is not at his best. It's going to be short of a first down, we believe. And we do have an injury on the field as well. Curtis Irby is hurt. And that would be a big loss for Navy. He's been in on several big stops today. Their most physical player in the defensive secondary. He's getting up. You see his braced right knee. And he'll come off with some assistance. He's a very physical player and very important to that secondary. He gives them the ability to come up and make the tackles. Uh, they need him, especially against this running offense of uh, Pitts. But more importantly, he's a senior and he has an experience in that secondary. So he's going to be short and it's going to be fourth down. What do you do if you're a Pitt? It doesn't look like it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be the punter. Right? Pitt feels that they can make six, six inches on the ground. So they're going to go for it. Fourth down, inches. Irby out, lurch in. Full house backfield, Calaguire's in the backfield with Hayward. Here is Hayward. He jumps for the first down at the 40-yard line. With Caliguire in the backfield, that's a loaded backfield. It's a loaded backfield. Mike Gottfried had a lot of confidence in his offense, and he knows he's got to keep the football here. He's got to generate some offense. They really haven't done much since the first period. So it's important to make this first down and keep the drive alive. A good call by Coach Gottfried. Pitt maintains control. They've got the ball up on their 40-yard line with uh, just under three minutes left in the third period. Look at that graphic. Pitt has been outscored 60 to 32 in the second half. It's not been a strong second half team, and not scored here. They fumble the snap, but Janela covers up at the 39-yard line. Now that could be a lot of reasons. We know we've got a new center in there. Bukowskis and the exchange under pressure but that time it looked like he didn't sit in there with him the ball came up never got it to him I'd say the center pulled away a little soon on that snap Janela did well to come back for the fumble. Curtis Irby they're checking out that right knee of the defensive back who's very important he's the strong safety comes up and forces the play second down coming up at about 10 here comes the pitch Hayward and he stopped David Lowe grabs onto him, and several other people get him as well, right at the route, the original line of scrimmage. They try to run back away from the field, into the sideline, to the tight end, into the sideline, the short corner, running behind Prentice Wright, the fullback, but an excellent job. Look at the pursuit, the blue shirts, beating blocks, getting to the outside, never giving uh, Hayward a chance to find a seam, and David Lowe was the key man there as he came up to make the hit from his inside linebacker position. They may not be able to battle you man for man in the trenches. There's Pittsburgh's third down conversion, but they can run to the ball. When you go wide, you are running into that situation, and Pittsburgh calls time. With 1.45 left to go in the third quarter, the Panthers use a timeout. They have two remaining. Navy earlier in the third quarter used a timeout as Sal Janela talks things over. You see some of the color, the two mascots uh, comparing notes. We call that detente among mascots here today. Yeah, that's good. 
We'll have to credit Dave for a chat with that. Yeah, he comes up with those kinds of things once in a while. You look at the Sun Splash crowd, Duke leading Maryland. Steve Spurrier's got things on the beam with the Blue Devils, 19 to 7 in College Park. Next week, we've got Tennessee at Boston College. Live from Chestnut Hill, a great intersectional battle. First visit by a Tennessee team to that, to that school in that area. It's going to be quite a game because you're going to have two wide open offenses going against each other. Johnny Majors throws the ball. He's got speed on the flanks. And of course, we know what Jack McNeil likes to do with his offense. Of course, both of those two teams have big games coming up today, of course. Uh, Boston College playing West Virginia. Tennessee, as we saw, score earlier involved with Georgia Tech. Okay, this is a big third down play. Janela has talked to the coaching staff on the sideline. He's coming back in. He rings with him Reggie Williams. Reggie Williams, the wide receiver. And the time of possession has switched drastically, and uh, it's very even. Maybe led by five at halftime in that category, or rather Pitt led by five at halftime in that category, but as you see, Navy's evened it up. Be interesting to see whether Navy is willing on third and ten to come after Janela and put pressure in what looks like a passing situation. Third down and ten. Janela, play fake, rushes on. That's Worthington, but he gets away from it. Janela still on his feet, close to the first down and driven out at the 49. He's going to be short of it. Pimpo to drive him out. Also, Darren Fullwood on the play. Sal Janela did what he did, what he had to do. He had to, his receivers were covered. He put the ball on the corner. He got out of bounds. He's a little bit short of a first down. But once again, with the ball sitting just outside the 50-yard line, it's not a hard decision for Mike Gottfried. Here he comes back. Little play fake, which doesn't mean much on third and ten. He's trying to slip though Hayward into the into the middle and maybe dump the ball to him, but he's really looking for Williams coming across. See number two, and he's open. He doesn't see him. He elects to run. He picks up nine yards. Fourth and less than a yard to go. Pitt's going to go for it again. Rasp stays on the sideline. Caliguar takes his spot at the halfback position. Three tight ends. Hayward Jones gets hit still on his feet and gets dragged down, but now he goes across for the first down. My goodness. What a great effort by the Navy defense, but what a tremendous effort by Craig Hayward to get the first down. That play, if anything, exemplifies the emotion level between these two teams. Pittsburgh now all of a sudden seems to have risen to the occasion. And they have to because Navy's playing with a tremendous pitch here. Look at this. He gets up. He gets hit right there. And it looks like, again, it was Pimpo, the inside linebacker, who jumps with him. But here it becomes a mismatch with Dickinson, number 19, the cornerback, trying to hold on and hold him back. And importantly, Hayward, when he came back out of that pile, came back on his feet. First and 10 of the 49. Here's an inside reverse, and it goes to Hayward. A little different wrinkle to the ball, and he gets about four. Repar in on the tackle for Navy out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ironically. And I think the most impressive thing today is how the Navy defense in the trenches is playing foot for foot right with them. They're really playing well and playing very tough inside. As we watch this replay again, he's rejected there. But look at this second effort. And watch Pimpo come again to make a hit. 37. What a second effort by him. However, it is. If, he, if Hayward gets down on one knee, he's down. But he came back down on both feet. Second down and about five. That's Osborne in motion. Pitch to Walker. Walker, not much there. Closed down quickly by Worthington. What a play by Ray Worthington. No game. The two names you've been calling all afternoon for the Navy defense. Mark Pimpo, the linebacker, and Ray Worthington, the outside linebacker. And watch him knife inside here and make the play on Walker. Big hit. Another third down situation for Sal Janella and the Pitt Panthers. Navy feels that their best athletes are at that outside linebacker position in Lowe and Worthington. We've got another timeout. And we've got the end of the third quarter as Pittsburgh holds on to a 10-6 lead. We are at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. Another quarter of football coming up, so stay with us. Nobody does it better. In the new world of minivans, nobody does it like the Ford Aerostar. Nobody gives you the highly distinctive styling, the smooth riding comfort, the engineering innovations of Ford Aerostar. For the discriminating, Baby, you're the best. nobody does it like Ford Aerostar. Have you driven a Ford lately?
The Great American Face. Strong. Sensitive. The Great American Razor. Actra Plus. Solid. With a Lubra Smooth Strip for extra protection. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Actra Plus. Only from Gillette. Wait till you see the changes we're making at Howard Johnson. This is Howard Johnson? This is Howard Johnson? This is Howard Johnson? This is Howard Johnson? Welcome back to Navy Marine Corps Stadium. We have 15 more minutes of football coming at you as Pittsburgh leads Navy by a score of 10 to 6. Surprise? Well, Navy isn't surprised. They felt that they could stay with them. Heisman hopefuls around the country in action today, and several of them are members of great American independent football teams that we feature each week. Tim Brown, they're listed alphabetically there, but he's the man who's at the head of everybody's list. And Craig Hayward has emerged this week as uh, definitely uh, a name that's being mentioned for the Heisman and of course Don McPherson the quarterback from Syracuse who's had a, a brilliant career well, national showcase with a win over Penn State and the big spotlight there for Syracuse they are now you know Dick McPherson was calling Penn State the major domo of the east and now they refer to Syracuse as the beast of the east right now they are having a strong season playing Colgate in a late start this afternoon right now it is Pittsburgh third and five at the 46, at the 44 of Navy. Big rush on, flag is thrown. Janella scrambling, gets hit near the sideline, and another flag is thrown. In the vicinity of the Pittsburgh sideline, Jimenez chased him. He did not hear the whistle, nor did he see the flag on the far sideline. Bill McDonald coming into the middle of your picture, and he'll clarify all of this. These penalties may, uh, may go against each other here. Well, I guess the key is, will the second penalty become a dead ball foul? Procedure against Pitt. They'll march that off first, and will they apply the second penalty is going to be the key. Pittsburgh may end up with a Here it is, right game now. situation. Here it is. Mark Pimpo looks for an explanation. Personal foul, Navy, along the sideline. And here's the argument right here. Elliot Uzelak says his player did not see the flag, nor did he hear the whistle, and continued to pursue the play as you look at it. He pushes Janela out of bounds. Janela obviously lets up. So the official ruling that had he seen that or recognizing that, he should let up as well, but he did not. And so the net gain of it, Elliot Uzelak throws his headset to the floor. He is really upset. Gotta be careful here. There's the headset. And several different pieces hustled to the sidelines. Well, he's battling. He's had a tough year. He's got these kids playing well. The last couple of games, they played with a great deal of emotion. There's no question they played exceptionally well today against a highly favored Penn, uh, Pitt team. And uh, he's just upset with the call. And uh, I guess if you put yourself in that situation, you'd feel the same way. So they take the penalty back five yards, and they move it downfield 15 after the personal foul. The net gain is down to the 35-yard line. So it's a gain of nine, and it's a first down. Delay hand out Hayward. Hayward gets away from several, but not too many more. Jimenez, the man, ironically, who drew the penalty for the personal foul, making the stop at the line of scrimmage. Again, they came to that counter play, which has been very successful for Pitt today, but they were there waiting for it on first down as we look at these third quarter stats. Rushing yardage, Pitt 159, but Navy holding their own. The total yards, very even. Second down and 11, and the Navy crowd incensed here, trying to spur their defensive unit, which has made several big stands today. Janela hands off to Hayward, big hole at the 30. The 25, he's got a first down at the 23-yard line. Another flag is down, another flag, and this time it'll probably go against Pitt as it was thrown at the interior of the line as they ran the draw play off the I formation. Big yardage, but it may be all for naught. As you see Bill McDonald, a holding play, the holding call. 
It was thrown in the vicinity of Dean Caliguire. We have an injury on the field to a pit football player. Let's see if we can spot who it is. And it's going to be Prentice Wright, the fullback. They don't have many more fullbacks. The original fullback that started the season, Nate Hayward, was injured. Lewis Riddick went down earlier in this game. And if Wright is seriously injured, well, that could be a problem. Doesn't look like he is. He's aided off the field. He'd like to come back for more. We'll have to go deep into the depth chart here to find who's going to be playing in place of Hayward. They may come out in three or four wide receivers. What they do is they'll bring Adam Walker, the other tailback, in the game, and they'll put Hayward at fullback if they have to. Hayward's run out of that spot several times today. And you're right, there is Walker dotting the eye. Second and 16 after the holding call. Janela on the pitch. Here's the reverse. And it is Hosea Hurd. Hurd trying to turn the corner. Cannot do it. David Lowe stops him dead in his tracks for a loss to the 42. And this is an amazing effort by the Navy defense. They've taken control of this football game here in the third period, and they've really denied the Pitt Panthers as they try to run this. They've been running that sweep. They've been running to one side. They try to run this reverse with Hosea Hurd, the speedster on the corner of the sophomore. But look at all those blue shirts waiting for him and a beautiful open field tackle by number 46, David Lowe. David Lowe on a satellite beach, Florida. 40 tackles coming into this game. That's his first one for a wall. Third down, a 19. Back to throw Janela with four in the panel. Looking deep, he wants Stewart. Out of his grasp incomplete. Covering on the play as Stewart went deep. And Stewart had a beat by a good three steps up the sidelines and he just out through his receiver. Good job, just a fly pattern. He beat Fullwood, had a beat. Janela couldn't get him the football. Janela completed his first three passes. And since then has been only two of his last seven. Rask with the kick. Hangs a beauty. Lurch watches it go out of bounds. And it's going to be marked out inside the 20 of the 16-yard line. And that's where Navy will take over, but a great defensive stand by Navy. And with 13-20 left to go in the football game, Pittsburgh 10, Navy 6. Navy's got the ball keeping their own territory. And we'll be back after this word from your local station. Only one car dealer makes you an offer you can't refuse. Only one backs the claim of lowest price with a million dollars in the bank. It's Lustine. If we can't beat any deal by at least $300, we'll pay you $1,000. Wrong. Now Lustine is offering a $10,000 guarantee. If we can't beat any deal by $300, we'll give you $10,000. Now you know we'll beat any deal. So get your best Lustine deal on a Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, Toyota, Dodge, or Nissan today. You've seen triple crown winners. Most valuable players. Gold Glove performances, Cy Young Award winners, six American League championships, and three World Championships. We've written a lot of history here at 33rd Street, and we're not about to stop now. Call 1-800-BASEBALL for 1988 Orioles season tickets. Then take your seat in history. You know, these track auto prices are so low, I wish my car needed more maintenance. <laughs> of course, I could always stock up. Especially this week. Stock up now on Valvoline 10W40 motor oil at just 38 cents a quart. For a smooth ride, install Monroe Gasmatic shocks at $14.99 each. Win spray carburetor cleaner is 29 cents. Friction proofing or Spitfire gas treatment, just 19 cents. He only makes it three. They got over 60 items on sale every week. Get the door! If you need it, Track's got it. Back with fourth quarter action at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. You're looking at Milan Vuletic, who is the defensive coordinator at Navy. And he's happy with what he's seen out of his defense thus far this afternoon. They've held Pitt to 10 points. Nothing here in the second half. Here is Grizzard. Back to throw. And big pressure on. He won't get it away. Tackled by Zeke Gadsden, blitzing in from the weak linebacker spot. 
Here's what's happened thus far today. Hayward with a one-yard run to give Pitt a 7-0 lead. Then Funduko's got Navy on the board with a field goal. Van Horn answered that, and that's how he went into the halftime at 10-3 Pitt's favor. And in the third quarter, Funduko's hits the longest of his career, 48 yards. For Navy, we get four. We've got 12.46 remaining, and it's Pittsburgh, 10-6. Second down and long. Grizzard, Blakeman, carries himself. Not much there again. Jerry Wall in on the stop as he followed the play of Alton Grizzard to the sideline. That was almost looked, it almost looked like a bootleg action where he faked here and came to the opposite side, and as he did, he just ran smack into Jerry Wall, the senior linebacker from Ingemar, Pennsylvania. He just made the hit, and they're looking at a third down and 15, and here, the most important thing for Navy is not to turn the ball over. Look at the upset. North Carolina State struggling. They lost their first two games of the season, their first three, and now they're about to hand punch in their first defeat. Everybody up on the line for Pitt. Quick in is incomplete intended for Jordan. And he made the right call. That time Jordan came on a slant. Pitt was blitzing their safety. There was nobody in the middle. Had he completed that, that could have been an interesting pass. Good coverage on the corner. But that's what he was looking for. Pittsburgh taking the chance to come after him. Look at this slant pattern. He catches that thing. He's got all of center field to himself. He didn't. And now Navy's forced to punt and Pittsburgh could come up with very good field position. For the first time in the second half, they did. You have to punt. Terrell Austin standing at the Navy 44 to get it. Nearly blocked. Newark gets it out of there. Fair catch called for by Austin, and he gets away with it and from it. And Dickinson finally brings it down at about the 45-yard line. Excellent territory from where Pitt can get their offense going. 34-yard punt from Newark under big pressure that time. He's had one block thus far this season, but it didn't happen that time. Another great American independent matchup, Pittsburgh and Navy, 10-6, Pittsburgh leading in the fourth quarter. We're going to be back with more action from Navy Marine Corps Stadium in just a moment, so stay with us. Left to go on the football game. Pittsburgh leading Navy by a score of 10 to 6. Pittsburgh with their best field position of the football game at the 45-yard line, actually of this half. They're at the 8 early. Janella calls his own number and gets stopped by Worthington. He called his own number because he fumbled a handoff. Watch this. There's, the ball comes up through his hand. That time, Janella never seated the ball in his midsection to hand it off. Very sloppy play. He's lucky to hold on to it. He takes the loss, second down. Great field position. They're looking at second and 12. That is the third mishandle today. They've recovered two of their own fumbles, and they've lost one. Hayward, another 119-yard day. That's his seventh straight 100-yard day. Here comes Janela out of the eye, and flags are thrown. Very sloppy play. Flags went down before the snap. Maybe he's a movement against Pittsburgh. I think he's going to go against Pittsburgh again. Janela knew it. Illegal procedure and motion against Pittsburgh. This will back them up another five yards as Mike Gottfried looks on, seeing his team coming up with some very tough games, and yet... A pesky Navy group here today. And Syracuse is the team they'll face next. They're leading Colgate by three touchdowns. The team we'll see next week, Tennessee, playing Georgia Tech today at Knoxville, leading. Notre Dame on the board, but Southern Cal leading by four in the first quarter at South Bend. Our score, 10-6, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh second and 17 near midfield. Janella on the draw to Hayward. Hayward tackled by Lowe in the backfield. What a play by David Lowe. And David Lowe along with Worthington and Pimpo, the other linebacker. This is a draw play out of the eye formation. They're trying to find a seam and get him started. But that's the only way to tackle him. David Lowe hit him right at the ankle and upset him. Big play with an Navy defense. And they're hanging in this ball game. And now Janela's looking at a third and 15. The ball at midfield. Pittsburgh 8 for 15 and third down conversions. They need one here. They'll go slot right. In the slot is Osborne, back to throw Janela. Has protection, looking long, wants Osborne incomplete. Double covered, Dickinson in on the play, as well as Jim Chatfield, the nickel back, the third and long. They came with five defensive backs, he tried to go right up the middle. 
trying to find Osborne deep in the center. He couldn't do it. The good coverage by Navy. Again, the Navy defense turns the ball back to their offense. Rass with a 29-yard average today, but that's deceiving. He's kicked to angles and corners. Here comes the kick to Lurch. Lurch takes it at the 10. It's in no man's land back there. He had to return it, and he goes down at the 10-yard line. And there's also a flag down. A flag was thrown, and it probably will go against Navy. 41-yard punt by Rasp, but a penalty coming. Navy gets it at the 10-yard line. Here's Bill McDonald. A clip against Navy. Janella has yet to complete a pass in the second half. They back them up to the five-yard line. During the return, penalty half the distance like of the goal. Pimpo was a guilty party. It was. Pimpo got downfield. He was hustling, trying to get a block to shake him loose, but he hit him in the back. So good. with, excuse me, Bob, with 10 minutes left to go in the football game, it's Pittsburgh, 10 to 6 over Navy. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Channel 50 is coming on strong tonight when the Grease Man joins Redskins After Hours, the Emmy Award-winning show that's more than just highlights. It's fun, fast, and never a dull moment. Join host Pete Wysocki, George Stark, Tilly Kornheiser, and DC 101's Grease Man as they talk to those bold, proud, and bulky Redskins stars. That's Redskins After Hours. Right here on your favorite station, Channel 50. That's right, right here. Hi, I'm Burton Richardson. I graduated from Columbia School of Broadcasting, so I know if you like music, news, and sports, that broadcasting is a great career. I recommend calling Columbia for a free catalog to find out more about the kind of voice you need, job placement assistance, and student loans and grants. It's yours free if you call now, and remember, you'll never know what you can do until you try. Call now for free information, 820-2020. Home study, complete broadcast studios in Bailey's Crossroads, Virginia. Call 820-2020. Penalties have hurt both clubs thus far this afternoon. They've hurt Pittsburgh to the tune of five times for 30 yards. They've hurt Navy six times for 47. They're trying to come back from one here that puts them at their own five. Wizard barely gets the ball away to fullback Curtis Brown, but he gets nice yardage out to the 14-yard line. I don't know how he got the ball to the fullback. He was met right on the line of scrimmage by the defensive tackle who breaks the line of scrimmage. Watch from the left side, and you'll see... Carter for Carter it. coming down from his defensive tackle position, and he almost got there before the handoff, but he slipped it to number 23. Brown, and Brown got good yardage breaking up the ball. 60 yards for the young man today. Curtis Brown out of the fullback position. Second and short now for Navy. Here's the handoff. Brown, first down, big yardage. Out to the 27-yard line. Gain on the play of about 13. Gary Richard and Terrell Austin finally met him to take him back. And it's Bradley. This is the counter. He had success with this early in the game. He hangs back to him. He gets through, running behind his right guard, Hoffaker, and he gets good yardage, gets a first down, and that's what they needed to get out of that dangerous territory. Look at the counter play. Look at that hole open up on the right side. The center makes the block fell, and Hoffaker, the right guard, gets the block on the defensive tackle. Navy's ability to run up inside of Pittsburgh has been key today. Their first 10 from their own 26. And off to the fullback this time, Curtis Brown, straight ahead to the 27-yard line. On the stop, Zeke Gadsden. Plenty of time left, over eight minutes on the clock here. They just want to get better field position, give themselves a chance to win this football game. There you see the score. This is the lowest scoring Pitt Navy game in 22 years. You go back to 1965 when Navy beat Pitt 12-0. Last year, Pitt flushed Navy 56-14 at Pitt Stadium. And Pitt's got everybody saved for one up on the line. Still does no good as getting straight ahead is going to be Curtis Brown up over the 30 to the 33. Terrell Austin on the stop. Okay, they're faced with that third down situation again, about third and four. The ball sitting just about on the 32-yard line of Navy. Checking in, Shane Smith, the wide receiver. He'll go to the top side of your screen on third and three for Navy. 33-yard line. Parker Brown in there as the setbacks. Here comes a handoff. It's going to be Bradley. And Bradley has 
the first down. A second effort gets him out of the grasp of John Carter and gets him beyond where he needs to go for the first down to the 37. And you've got to give credit to this offensive line. Watch this little counter trap here. 62 pulling around. Hoffaker to make the block. Just give him enough room to get up inside and knife his way for just about four yards. First down, they keep the drive alive and uh, they're really going after it. Curtis Irving injured earlier in this half. Out for the day, obviously, as you see him on crutches. First down again. Everybody up on the line, and here comes Grizzard out to the 40-yard line. If Pitts had success anywhere today, Bob, it's stopping the quarterback. They string it out. They've got good pursuit. They've got great athletes on the perimeter. It's very hard to get on the corner, either with the quarterback ducking up inside or pitching it out to the, to the trail back. Another good job on the corner by Carnell Smith. He's really played a fine football game uh, at defensive end for the Pitt Panthers. So it's a second and long, second and seven. They've got the ball on their own 40-yard line, and they've elected to run in these situations. They're taking time off the clock as they do, as you saw both teams even in first downs at 12. Second down, seven. And off straight ahead to the fullback, it's Brown. He's gotten a call on many occasions this afternoon. Asowski is in on the stop for Pitt, along with Walker. Mark Spindler, also the defensive tackle, playing the, 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 the freshman coming down inside to make the hit. And again, it's third down and about four. Pittsburgh holding onto the, uh, excuse me, Navy holding onto the football here, trying to make first downs and get themselves in field position, maybe to finally put the ball off with the pass. Six twenty and counting as you look at Elliot Uzelak. Third down and four. Navy at their own forty-four. Here's Grizzard to keep. Now pitches at the last moment to Bradley, and he's got the first down. He also gets out of bounds and stops the clock with six minutes and seven seconds. Excellent judgment on the part of the quarterback, Grizzard. He fakes to the fullback. He comes down the line. They string it out again. Watch the contained man coming up, and he just pitches it on the corner. Good job by Bradley holding on to the pitch a little bit high and just getting enough for the first down. That's fake into the line as Grizzard goes down the line. You know, Pitt has got everybody up there, but still, they can't stop them. First down, 13th first down of the day for Navy. And here is Parker. And Parker for big yarder. Inside the 40 to the 37. Terrell Austin has to come up with his second straight tackle. And this possibly will get close to moving the chains again. The counter play again. This time running behind Joe Brennan, 74, who gets the block inside for him. And the biggest back in the backfield that time, Parker, at 204 pounds, gets the yardage. And it's second and very short. And now they're in pit territory. 5.37 left to go. Time of possession now tipping in Navy's favor. Here is Grizzard. Passing. Incomplete. Intercepted. Intercepted by Jones. Flag is thrown. Jones going down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds. The flag may be a clip against Pittsburgh. We'll see. It comes in that general area, so it looks like the interception will stand. He was looking for the... He had a waist down. Second and short. He was looking to hit the slant pattern inside. Look at this. They're going to call interference here, probably. An interference call, so the interception likely won't go. And Mike Godfrey can't believe it. He's Godfrey been in a dog was... fight all afternoon, and he knows it. Coming into this ball game, he his, was, he his headset's off. He was concerned about the, uh, the ability of this club to play today and not look forward. Automatic first down. That's an interference against Pitt. It appears that Jones interfered. Let's look at it. Here it is, a slant pattern from the outside. He waits for him to come open. He comes out of that play fake now he throws the ball let's watch closely it bounces off of Hughes and it had to happen earlier it had to happen and go against Austin number 19 he must have interfered with him as he was going for the football and that was the call what a change of fortune instead of an interception by Jones it turns out to be interference against Austin Pittsburgh bitten by the penalty bug again six times 37 yards but more importantly Navy maintains position and possession at the tip 32. First and 10, and off Bradley inside, and they work it over the 30 to about the 28 yard line. Gain of four. Looks like Osowski in on the tackle. Gary Richard coming up to make the stop. But again, Bob, the inside running game of Navy working. 
get three, get four once in a while, a little bit more. They're slicing the ball in there, keeping them honest in the middle and occasionally coming on the perimeter. But if they had success today in maintaining possession, it's been running from tackle to tackle inside against the pit defense. Marching toward an exciting finish here. Second down and seven. Straight ahead, it's the fullback. No, it's James Bradley, the halfback. And again, Remember, we're in the four-down zone. They can go for it on fourth down if they want, and of course they will here. They didn't get much yardage on that, giving it to the fullback. So they come up third down and about six. Of course, uh, they want more than three because they're four back with 4-12 left to go as Newman, actually Hughes, steps to the sideline. Carnell Smith making the tackle. Navy with two timeouts left, and Navy six for 15 on third down. Rizzard gives to Bradley. Hole opens up for a minute, but then it closes down short of the first down at the 25-yard line. Gadsden, one of those in on the stop. Gadsden making the clutch play again. There's a little counter, handing that ball back to uh, Bradley, trying to slip him in the middle, but Gadsden came in from the outside linebacker, the defensive end position, excuse me, the outside linebacker position to make the hit, and here it is. Key play. This is where the two coaches and their staffs earn their money. As Grizzard comes to the line, biggest play of the game. Fourth and four to go. Ball at the Pittsburgh, 25-yard line. Grizzard keeps, doesn't have enough. Tries to push the ball over for a first down, but he's shot. Jerry Wall brings him down. Now Navy with an interesting decision. Here's the play again. He just fakes it in. They're playing. Look at Wall just sitting, holding his position. He never had a chance to pitch it because there were two defenders on the corner to take that. He made the right choice, but Wall made the key hit. The field goal, of course, would not have done them any good. It would have still left them behind by one. They opted to go for it and came up short. Pittsburgh takes over with 3-12 left to go, leading by four. Pittsburgh leading Navy 10 to 6 and Pitt dodged the bullet on fourth and four. They held, they have the ball, they have the lead, and 312 left on the clock at their own 23-yard line. In motion is Osborne. Handoff is Hayward. We expect Hayward will see a lot of the football today. He runs head on into Pimple, but gets about two yards just the same for falling forward. And he's going to see the ball on this drive, and Navy has to think about their timeout. They've got two remaining. There's uh, less than just under three minutes to go in a the game. They got about. They got to think about using their timeouts along the way. You know that Sal Janela probably won't put anything up in the air here at this point in time. They want to take some clock with them, and they're taking their time here. As you see Stewart come to the near sideline. He split out there with Williams. Second and seven. Light is the fullback. Hayward gets the call. There's room up the middle to the 32-yard line. He's about a yard short of the first down. Mark Pimpo runs into him again. That's the luxury of having a back like Craig Hayward under these conditions. To get him the football and look at him just cut back to the soft area in the defense and look at the balance that he shows. And watch him protect the football, too. One thing Pittsburgh can ill afford is a mistake in this area of the field with 2.08 remaining. And now as you get under that two-minute mark, you look at Navy having to use those timeouts. Third and short coming up. Hayward's work day has been a busy one. 33 carries, 130 yards, seven straight 100-yard day. Under two minutes left. Hayward again, carry number 34, four number 34, and he's got the first down. Another stop by Mark Pimpo. Pimpo's had an outstanding day. The junior from Strongsville, Ohio, the leading tackler coming into this game, has really been outstanding on uh, defense, clutch plays on short yardage situations, one deflected pass. Uh, really uh, quite an effort by Mark Pimpo, as we mentioned earlier. He's the third member of his family to attend the Naval Academy. Michael Stewart brings a play in. I suspect he told Janella, run Hayward again. 126 left. Another first down here. Surprise, it's Hayward. Up to the 37, and now Navy's in a situation where they have to use their timeout. David Lowe on the stop, but Navy burns a timeout. They have one remaining with 1.17 left to go. Craig Hayward. Ironhead comes back to the huddle. 
started the day at 268 pounds. I suspect with the work he's received today, he's closer to 260 than he thinks. He came into this game uh, rushing for 182 times, uh, 780 yards, and over 4.3 average on the ground with six TDs. Here's what's left for both of these teams. It doesn't get any easier for the middies next week at Notre Dame, then Syracuse, and then a great 1AA program, Delaware, and then the traditional closing game of the season with Army. And here's what's ahead of Pitt. Pitt next week at home against Syracuse, then they travel to Rutgers, who's coming alive. Of course, their great rivalry with Penn State and finishing the season against Kent State. Lots of activities here at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. As you see, I believe those are the plebes down in the end zone performing for the crowd here today. It's been a happy one to this point, but right now there's concern. And look at that score. Second quarter at Chestnut Hill. West Virginia leading B.C. 10 to 7. We'll see Boston College next week at Alumni Stadium. Holy Cross undefeated. Leading in the second quarter against Brown. Great 1AA school and a Heisman hopeful of their own. And Gordy Luckbaum. And there's, speaking of Heisman hopefuls, Craig Hayward. 11 100-yard games in career. He's had seven. One in each game played this year. Second down and nine. Hayward again to the 40. Troy Holland is in on the stop along with Ray Worthington and Larry Dickinson. They won't use their last timeout right now. They're going to go on third down here. If they can hold them, they'll use it on that as the clock ticks away. Navy has one timeout remaining. We'll see Notre Dame in two weeks against Boston College. That's a second quarter score as the Fighting Irish have now pulled ahead of Southern Cal. Clock moving, 51 seconds. Third and long coming for Pitt. Janela should use the clock here to the maximum. Take his time. Not even take a penalty. 40 seconds. Four on the game clock, on the play clock. Here's Hayward. They get it off in time, and he is stopped by a host of people, and that's where Pitt, or other Navy, will take their final time out. So they hold, and they'll get a chance to get the ball with some time left. There's fourth downs coming up for Pitt. It's a loss on the play of about three, bringing up fourth and ten. Pinfall and Lowe, whose names we've called all day, have been on a stop on Hayward. Got to say that the Navy defense has really done a job today. They've done and, a great uh, job. They've done a great job against the run. And uh, again, they, they did the job right here. They did their job today. It's been a matter of their offense not having good field position, and that's a credit to Pittsburgh. They put them in a hole with their kicking game, and uh, they really never had good field position. But they will, Navy offense, have a chance. One more shot at it with probably a little less than 30 seconds left in the fourth period. Now, Rasp. Comes in to kick. He came in with a 41-yard average. He's had, the stats suggest a difficult day today, but really it hasn't. He's been kicking from midfield into zones inside the 20. So actually, he's had a successful day. He's had one block this season. He's had a long kick of 60 thus far this year. There you see his average. His longest today has been 41. But more often than not, he's been kicking it from midfield. He's uh, back at his own 28 this time. The ball resting on the 40. David Lurch is back to receive. So Lurch will be assigned the task of giving Navy field position with 30 seconds remaining to possibly line up a winning score. Navy will put 10 men on the line. You see it from Rass's perspective. Tom Hubner is the long snapper for Pitt. Snap is there. Rush is on, but the kick is out. There is Lurch at the 14. Cuts to the sideline and try to stop the clock and does. Gets enough yardage, then steps out of bounds to stop it with 20 seconds left. David Tansos is there on the stop. 20 seconds to come downfield. So Navy, their final possession. They are 75 yards away. And now the pressure on the quarterback, the plebe quarterback, Alton Grizzard, uh, who stepped into the starting position two games ago, had a fine day against Pennsylvania, leads his team out of the huddle with uh, 20 seconds left on the clock. Don Hughes is wide to the bottom of your screen. Clock moving now, Grizzard rolling right. Steps up, gets hit. Got to get him back. No timeouts on the clock. He's got to get him reassembled. John Carter on the stop. Nine seconds, time rolling. No timeouts left for Navy. They'll have to go without a huddle and get another snap. This will be the last play of the game. Here's a pass to the sidelines. It stops the clock, but the clock had already stopped for the end of the game. Time runs out. The game apparently is over. 
Is there time remaining? Less than a second. It's over. It's over. It's done as Mike Gottfried comes along to the Navy sideline to congratulate Elliot Uzelak as the game ends. Time runs out on Navy as they put on a great finish here, but Pittsburgh goes off to their best start in a while. Five and two as they win it by a score of 10 to six over Navy. We'll be back after this word from your local station.